And a good evening from New Smyrna Speedway. It's night number seven of the 54th running of the World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing. Welcome to our coverage of night number seven. Four divisions of racing action tonight. All for you on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. Along with Alan Dietz, this is Adam Mackey. And they don't get much more exciting than what we saw on night number six. Exciting races, all four of them, in fact, especially that tour type modified John Blue at the third memorial a night ago, which saw the closest of finishes. Just can't get any closer than that for a win. No, and, you know, the thing that the 2020 World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing will be most remembered for is that finish between Anthony Nocella and Matt Hirschman. And, you know, a lot of the comments that we've seen since that event were, just about how good that race was, how close it was, and how clean it was. You see our night number seven schedule for this evening. Pro late models, Florida modifieds, the short intermission tour type modifieds, and super late models on schedule. There you see a driver behind the wheel of the number 16 pro late model tonight. That driven by Travis Braden. Yep, the 2019 Snowball Derby winner. He's been here uh, in a variety of roles this week, he came in and uh, originally to work with the 28 team that we're looking at right there of Connor Mosack. And then he began uh, doing some work with Nicholas Noggle. Last night he was the spotter for Jet Nolan. And tonight we'll find him behind the wheel of this Mark Krause owned Toyota. And I'm excited to see that. You know, Travis Braden is a great young driver. Um, his girlfriend, Jess Ballard, they do a great job on social media to kind of document uh, their days at the racetrack and stuff. So it'll be it'll be good to watch uh, Travis Braden out there in our first feature tonight here for the Pro Late Models. Travis in qualifying, just missing the invert by a couple of spots. It puts him in the second row, but pretty good effort for his first night, potentially his only night behind the wheel. There you see the car for a moment. The 28 of Connor Mosack, which is our point leader coming in, yet to win this week, but he's been on the podium almost every night. His worst finish of the week came last night. It cost him a lot of points. He was still in the top ten, but barely. Mosack was tonight's top qualifier in that group qualifying practice session. He'll start second here this evening. There's Jet Nolan in the car number 50. He won last night's Pro Late Model race the only driver to win multiple pro late model races here at the World Series. He was involved in an accident, uh, possibly a brake failure at the end of the super late model race. And I don't know um, if you noticed there, but that last shot we had of the crowd, we thought that the crowd would be down a little bit tonight, but I think we've got a pretty good crowd here. You know, and the reason we say we thought it would be down traditionally when the duels are going on at Daytona that you folks are either watching while you're watching us on track pass or are going to be watching after on demand uh so the crowds are down a little bit here at new smyrna when on track actions at daytona but uh, i think we've got a pretty good crowd not a special event tonight just four 35 lap features which all should be exciting as we watch these championship battles for these four staple classes of the world series get ready to go and Crowd down a little bit because of the, the big race going on at the big track, but still a good crowd to watch tonight's racing. Different driver behind the wheel of the number nine tonight. It's been Hudson Halter each and every night so far in pro late model action. Hudson had to get out of here for some school, for some work, and uh, younger brother Harrison gets to get behind the wheel for the first time this week. Yeah, another young man out of the state of Georgia, and, you know, we talk about it all the time just how – tough and, and what a grind the World Series is. You know, we've been racing here now for almost a week. The first green flag dropped on uh, last Friday afternoon, and um, I think that's why these drivers are so proud at the end of the World Series, if they can come home and capture that championship. Remember, if you're watching at home, be sure to use hashtag track pass on any of your social media outlets. Let us know where you're from, and let us know that you're watching our coverage. Taking a look at tonight's starting lineup for this opener of night number seven, Jamie Skinner, second fast in qualifying. He's fourth in points. He's picked up a win, second place last night, and he's now only eight points behind for the championship. Jamie Skinner out of Port Orange, Florida in the number five. Point leader, 
And tonight's fast qualifier from Charlotte, North Carolina, Connor Mosack in the number 28 starts on the outside of row one. Back in row number two, that'll be the car number 29, the BH Holmes construction machine from Lebanon, Tennessee, of Hunter Wright. To his outside, as we said, out of West Virginia, the car number 16. We've seen Geo Selzy behind the wheel. We've seen Derek Krause behind the wheel. Tonight, it'll be the Snowball Derby winner, Travis Brayton. Been a few different drivers behind the wheel of that 16 this week, but we've seen a first place finish for Selsley. We've seen a second place finish for Kraus as well. Our fifth place starter tonight is Brandon Brilliant out of McDonough, Georgia in the 12 car. He starts on the inside of row number three. He picked up a top five finish in his only race of the year last night. Jet Nolan to win last night. The Groveland, Florida driver, the number 50, just two points behind Connor Mosack for the championship. The Brycon Construction Toyota from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia of Nicholas Noggle. The 08 will start seventh. He was the winner on opening night. His outside, the Metro Dodge from Daytona Beach, Florida. Car number 43, Daniel Dye. Hayden Sprague starts ninth in the 51. Podium finisher last night. He's fourth in the standings, only eight points back. So he's kind of been quietly sticking around for a chance at the championship. Jarek Johnson out of Mooresville, North Carolina in the 76 is eighth in points. He starts 10th here tonight. Take you back 11 through 15 here from Martinsburg, West Virginia will be the car number 29, or excuse me, 26 of Christian Rose. He'll start 11th. 12th from Athens, Alabama, the 17 of Chuck Tuck starting 13th. From Denver, North Carolina, the car number 44 of Gil Linster starting 14th. In the 55 from New Smyrna Beach, Florida, that's Chad Aikens. We'll tell you a little bit more about him momentarily. And from Guilford, Ontario, the car number 03 of Dario Capircio. Starting 16th outside of row number 8, Harrison Halter from Cumming, Georgia, making his first start of the week. Jamie Sullivan of Christmas, Florida, the 05, making her first start of the week. She starts in the 17th position. David Weaver starts 18th, 12th in the standings for Weaver. Martin Dubeck of Port Orange, Florida, scheduled to start in the 19th position, but Dubeck had a crash in practice earlier, not making the call for the feature. And Philip Bassett in the 117 will round out our field, scheduled to start in the 20th position. 20 drivers on the starting lineup for tonight's Pro Late Model 35 lap feature. It has started tonight. Of course, the Pro Late Models were the talk of the early portion of the week because of some rough driving. And it didn't just involve Jet Noland and Jamie Skinner. It involved other drivers as well. But those were the two main ones. They've had some extra meetings since then. In the last two or three nights, it's been extremely clean with only a couple of cautions. They put on good, clean shows, kept their equipment in one piece, and another good field of young drivers of Pro Late Models are ready to go tonight. A couple of those other drivers that we mentioned new this week, the 51 of Chad Aikens. He was a former regular here at New Smyrna Speedway. Actually started out in quarter midgets here. He's making a return. And the 05 of Jamie Sullivan, a young lady with pro truck experience, making a pro late model start tonight. Top two qualifiers bring him in for green. Skinner on the low side. Mosack on the outside. Underway. Beaten and banging a little bit already. Racing for real estate. Heading into one. Will Skinner go up the track? He will. As the 28 stays alongside. Mosack the advantage. Middle of the back stretch as the field will slow. For Sullivan in the 05. And damage to that race car. You can see that left front looking like it's shoved to the inside. And I think that right front is down. Yeah, that was an interesting start. Uh, the last couple of nights, we've not really seen the drivers cr crowd each other as much as they were earlier in the week. And uh, it was pretty tight there going into turn one. And don't forget, Connor Mosack and Jamie Skinner, they've had a couple of moments of contact. And that's a little more than a flat tire. Yeah, right front suspension on the 05 of Sullivan pulls into the pits. Doesn't look to be major, major damage. Definitely right front suspension, though as we'll line them up, restack them, and try it again. So we could see Mosack didn't want to give Skinner a lot of room, and Skinner was not going to allow that to happen as he went up the track a little bit in one and two, and I'm sure we'll see much the same. It's going to be a battle that if Mosack gets out front with his car, he could be tough to beat. And here's you a look at the replay. A little bit of contact, and then down here it was very tight. I mean, I, I don't know if they made contact, but boy, you, they might have actually made contact out of turn number two 
And then you saw Jamie Sullivan in that uh, 05 car as her car ended up against the turn one wall. Been a fun week here at New Smyrna Speedway and on the east coast of Florida. All of the racing going on. And from everything we hear, crowds here at New Smyrna definitely up. We've been a part of that every night. Crowds at the other racetracks also up. Great sign with everything going in the right direction for these short tracks, which we love so much, and we love to see them be successful. And this one has definitely been a successful speed weeks for not only New Smyrna Speedway, but some of the other tracks running big races as well. And here's another look. They make time. contact twice. And then Sullivan, just at the bottom of the screen, can't really tell as there's she made the contact it almost looked like she might have had the problem before she ever hit the wall because it really didn't look like she hit the wall all that hard and you know you talk about as we get set for this green flag how the short tracks had done down here in florida the 62nd annual daytona 500 it was announced today a sellout awesome and president donald trump he'll be there on sunday as well Green flag, turn four. We try it again. Mosack, a good restart on the outside lane. Oh. As Skinner makes a little contact middle of the straightaway. We go into turns one and two. Up the track we go. Yep, there was contact there. Off the second corner. Slight advantage for Mosack heading to turn three. Travis Braden looks good in the outside lane behind Mosack. Skinner gets a good run on the bottom in his Toyota. He's about a half car length ahead, but look at Mosack come back on the outside. They make contact going down into turn number one. Off the track a little bit, Skinner. A little Watch bit of this. contact. Mosack checks up for him. Here comes Hunter Wright to the bottom of the racetrack. Hunter Wright trying to take advantage of this hard racing between the leaders. Now what Skinner has to hope is that he can drive away while these drivers try to sort it out back behind them. Talked to Hunter Wright earlier. I said, any gender reveals going on tonight? He did one for someone last night. He says no, and I kind of joked with him about the technical difficulties they had with it. He's happy with this car tonight, running for second on the inside of point leader, Connor Mosack. And remember the blue that came out of the exhaust last night, you speculated they were having a smurf. I think it's actually going to be a baby boy. I did get confirmation that was the case. Wow. Look at Braden make it three wide down the back stretch into the corner. Right, caught in the middle of the racetrack. That room gets closed wow. up. He checks up just in time. Second, third on back. Close racing in this pro late model event. We saw three wide not work so well here in the Arkham Menard Series East race on Monday night, but these drivers get it sorted out right now back into fourth, but he's got Jet Nolan to his inside in the car number 50. Yeah, and Jet Nolan in the 50 car was good last night out in front of the pack, and he ran away from Jamie Skinner down the stretch. Brandon Brilliant in the outside lane, the number 12 car was pretty good last night, trying to show that it's brilliant tonight. He picks up a spot, moves up into the top five. You know, he hasn't raced here all week with that car number 12, but as you said, he looked pretty good here last night. I think he looks good tonight as Nicholas Noggle in that 08 car. He's going to take a peek down to the inside of Nolan. They made a little bit of contact. And now here comes Daniel Dye in the 43. He'll go look down on the inside of Hayden Sprague to take away six. Oh, and Whoa. Sprague makes some contact, pushes Dye up the banking. Great save for the teenager. Daniel Dye, who has had great finishes this week, no worse than sixth place in pro late model competition. And that sixth place finish was the night that he basically destroyed the right side of the car, but everybody on Sunday night basically destroyed their cars. Eight laps completed. 27 laps to go, still early in this race. And it's been one of the racier pro late model events we've seen to this point. It continues. Hunter Wright gets shuffled back in the 29, who was running third. He's going to fall out of the top five. Brandon Brilliant moves up. So does Jet Nolan, who's on the move to the front. And Nicholas Noggle trying to get a good finish tonight. He won on opening night this week, but it's been a little bit of a struggle since for Nicholas Noggle. You know, if, if, if they could get the qualifying worked out on that 08 car, I think he's had a car all week that was fast enough to win. He won last Friday night, but he's had to start so far back since then that he either gets caught up in something or runs out of time. Nicholas Noggle from Nova Scotia. Ran a pro stock tour in 2018. One on opening night, his best finish since was last night, fourth place. He's on the inside of Jet Nolan. As Hunter Wright, Daniel Dye, and Sprague line up behind them. All drivers competing for the championship. 
contact up the track they go. Here comes Hunter Wright. Three wide again on the back stretch. Second time we've seen three wide. And again, these drivers racing as close as they can, trying to keep the momentum up with these under horsepowered cars. Right? Trying to take away that seventh spot away here from Nicholas Nogger. Meanwhile, Jamie Skinner is leading. Connor Mosack is running in the second position. As we watch these pro late models head down into turn one. You see the right rear pretty used up on the 29 car of a driver from Lebanon, Tennessee. Now you mentioned that this has been one of the racier pro late model races we've seen. We've seen a lot of great pro late model races this week. But with that said, Jamie Skinner, once he was able to get out front, he is checked out right now. He's got just a little over a second lead over Connor Mosack, who rides in second, and Travis Brayton, who's in third. Brandon Brilliant running fourth. Jet Nolan running in the fifth spot. We're 15 laps into the race. Nicholas Noggle in that 08 car. You mentioned the parts for truck pro stock tour that races in the Canadian Maritimes. He also raced at Speed Fest down at Watermelon Capital in January, and we've seen him also race down south with the Pass Series in the Easter Bunny 150 at Hickory. Nose to tail, Jet Nolan mm. fifth, Nicholas Noggle in sixth, Then Noggle gets to the inside, turns under last night's winner, and of course Nolan, despite badly damaging a race car earlier this week, Wow. In competition for the championship after a win last night. Ooh, let's watch going down into turn one. These two got together a couple of laps ago. They stay off of each other this time. And now Nolan able to battle back on the outside. Been a lot of side-by-side -side action in tonight's race. Maybe more than we've seen in any of the pro races this week. Wow. And look how close they race coming off of four. Hardly any room for a mistake. <laughs> you got that right. And you keep seeing a little bit of smoke from where it looks like a fender slightly on the left rear of that car number 50 of no one this time. Noggle goes up the racetrack. They make more contact out of turn four, but again, no one comes back on the outside. And they bump tires wow. again and still able to control it. Good save by those two. Are we going to see three wide again? This time, Hunter Wright thinks better of it as they go back into turn number three. And... This has all the looks of an accident waiting to happen. And Hunter Wright, Daniel Dye, and Sprague, they've all closed. Dye making a move to the inside of Wright. That is for position number seven. A big group of young drivers here. This entire group right here from Jet Nolan in the 50 back to the 51 of Hayden Sprague. Daniel Dye's had a good week in the pro late models. Had a crash in the... Arca Menards Series East and had a crash in his super late model, but his pro late model, he's been pretty consistent, and he's put himself in contention just two points behind Connor Mosack, tied with Nolan for second. He and Wright make some contact there in turn four. That's allowed Daniel Dye to look to the inside. Now 13 laps to go as they work out of turn number two and back down the back straightaway. Hunter Wright gets a great run off of turn number two down to the final. 12 laps of this 35 lapper. Noggle makes another move. That's on Jet Nolan. Pulls up behind the left rear. Now gets to the inside. Big contact. Sliding sideways Noggle. Nolan slides up the banking. Both have again done a great job to control. You know, we've seen a lot of contact in this race, but the drivers have done a great job to steer out of possible crashes. Just a matter of when one will eventually happen. Well, that 50 and 08 car, if the two of those don't wreck either together or one another i'll be surprised because they have really beat on one another as noggle again is going to look down the inside and i'm sure he's getting frustrated he's faster than nolan but no one's able to pinch him down and, and bind that momentum up they make contact again i mean it's we've seen it for 10 laps now with these two it's just so hard on the inside lane to make a pass and keep your momentum up when that guy in the outside lane has control and can keep his momentum up and keep yours pinched down. So that's why you see these pro late models numerous times rub side by side. You have to have a really, really good race car to be able to, even though Jamie Skinner's car seems to be much faster than some of the others, even he has to make contact sometimes 
the drivers in the outside lane. Believe me, if he could do it cleanly, he would be doing it cleanly each and every time. 27 laps completed. Daniel Dye right on the rear bumper of Hunter Wright. Maybe makes some contact down in one and two. Gets to the inside of that B.H. Holmes, number 29. Daniel Dye pulls alongside. It is for the eighth position. You know, one thing that we heard today and, and some of the good news we're hearing uh, out of NASCAR and in short track racing, NASCAR, whoa, as Daniel Dye works that steering wheel when he gets sideways. But uh, NASCAR Steve Phelps today, you and I were talking prior to the race, said that they have just about reached their subscription uh, goal here for track pass on NBC Sports Gold. And we're only in the middle of February now. So for track pass, for Speed 51, streaming races has really come into its own here and very high quality broadcast. Nicholas Nago in the 08. 51 car of Sprague. 50 of Nolan, knows the tail they are. In the upper left of the screen, it's your leader, Jamie Skinner. His lead, seven-tenths of a second over Connor Mosack. Yeah, Mosack has cut it down in half now, and he's going to need a caution here because there's only going to be three laps to go. But you can see right just out of sight there in the screen that Jamie Skinner's in, that 28 machine of Connor Mosack, you caught a glimpse of him there. I mean, he is... He's chopping it down, but he's going to run out of time. Good shots on the screen of the battle in the lower right and the leader in the upper left. Two laps to go as we go back to the battle again for the 50 of Jet Nolan, the 08 of Nicholas Noggle running fifth and sixth. Noggle is going to try to mount another challenge. You know how bad he wants to get around this 50 after they've raced side-by-side -side so much and traded so much paint, tire marks all over the driver's side of that 50, and I think every single one of them came from the 08 car. White flag in the air, and Connor Mosek is closing the gap down on Jamie Skinner, but he's not going to be able to close it enough as they go right now. They race out of turn number two. As we watch down through turns one and two is the 50 car of Nolan, the 08 of Noggle. Race is uh, crossing the line with the victory is Skinner. Second place, Mosack. Third, Travis Brayton in his only start of the week. The 12 of Brandon Brilliant takes fourth and fifth place to Jet Nolan. Second win of the week here for Jamie Skinner, and he made a big move to break away from the pack on the only restart of, the, of tonight's race. And that proved to be the difference, really. He had opened up to about a second and a half lead over Connor Mosack. The margin at the finish, 0 .571. So Mosack had gained a second on Skinner with that car number 28, but had lost too much ground in the early going. So Skinner has got the Alpha Prime machine in victory lane once again here at new smyrna speedway adam mackey is headed down track side and once he gets set and ready we'll throw it down to him who'll get a word with our winner let's go down to adam look back car was really good again car was very good again i can't thank my brother dustin enough for all the hard work he puts in all of our people can't thank him enough eagle steel alpha prime national tire clayton castetter you've been around me for a long time always supported me mike swain you're the best ej at american auto everybody that makes it possible i can't thank everybody enough hooligans port orange my lady aaron didn't make it out tonight i want to thank her for everything she does and all her support uh it's all these people that make it all happen and make it. It's what makes it worth it. Pro late models had a rough start to the week. First few races saw a lot of crashes, a lot of carnage between just about everybody in the field. It's really turned around the last few nights. You notice the difference out there as well? Yes, for sure. You don't have people beating against each other during uh, coming to the green. It's There's more respect out there. Uh, we all kind of maybe 
forced the issue a little bit and we were bouncing off each other and I was bouncing off people and people are bouncing off of me and you you kind of race people how you're raced and so ev everything is good with everybody I'm not sure how the rest of our car is done but uh, we had four cars in the field tonight and hopefully the rest of them had some good finishes uh, Hayden Sprague's done a great job everybody here has done a great, great super fantastic job and can't be thankful enough Jamie Skinner wins for a second time this week. His last three finishes have been very good, and it puts him in contention for a definite championship. Came in trailing Connor Mosack by eight points. Going to be down to six now as we get to talk to our points leader. Connor Mosack, fast in qualifying earlier. Oh, so close tonight. In fact, I think you might have been running the leader down at the end. Car feeling pretty good? Yes, again, the best car we've had all week. Um, definitely we're running him down there. Just, um, you know, guys still don't know how to race on the, on the start. So kept having to lift out of the gas, trying to come up to the wall. Otherwise, we would have been putting the wall again like two or three times. Yeah, you know, frustrating when you make the start. It's all about getting into turn one, being ahead, getting out of turn two ahead. And you're probably a car, if you think you get out front in a race that goes green as much as it does tonight, you think you have a shot to win. Yeah, we just were a little tight there on the start to really roll the outside well, but that was probably the first race all week. I've been hoping for a caution. And you almost got it, right? I mean, you, you were thinking, come on, it's got to happen here down the stretch the last couple of laps. I was hoping for it, but, you know, it didn't happen tonight. Connor Mosack, second place run, still looking for his first win of the week. He's had a great week with numerous podium finishes. The Geo Selsey car, the 16 Three different drivers this week, the third of which is the veteran and Snowball Derby winner, Travis Braden. Travis, pretty good run tonight. Didn't get a yellow to close the gap there at the end, but solid nonetheless. How did it feel? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid, I would say, considering, uh, you know, 24 hours ago, I was just here hanging out, and these guys weren't planning on racing tonight necessarily. So uh, to put something together, thanks so much to Wooten Automotive, Platinum, Platinum Express, uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway, Victory Custom Trailers, everyone that put this together to uh, get me in the car for at least a night before the World Series was over. Uh, I thank them so much and thank this team. They worked really hard uh, to get it together last minute, and we went out there and we we're, were on the front stretch. So I don't know if I could have asked for much more. And uh, it was an honor to work with them, and hopefully we'll do it again sometime. It was a lot of fun. Tell us about your week. You've done a little bit of everything. You've worked on cars, you've crew chiefed, you've worked up on top of the towers as a spotter, and now you've driven. Getting plenty of experience and everything. Just build that resume, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I've done, I've done, I've heard it all. I've done it all this week, man. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's rewarding. You be coming to the end of the week on a more positive note than I started the week. And I uh, had a lot of fun today. Had a lot of fun running this race. And just thankful, you know, every day I'm out of racetrack, every day I'm behind the wheel of a car. Travis Braden, third place run tonight in the Pro Late Model 35. Thanks a lot, Adam, as we take a look at our top ten finishers from the Pro Late Models. Jamie Skinner, the winner. Connor Mosack in second. Travis Braden, third. Brandon Brilliant will finish in fourth. Fifth will be Jet Nolan. Nicholas Noggle in sixth. Seventh will be Hayden Sprague. Eighth, Hunter Wright. Ninth, Daniel Dye. And tenth is Jarek Johnson. And understand there's some weather at Daytona, so hopefully you folks have been able to tune in and join us here on track pass on NBC Sports Gold because we're clean and green so far other than this problem here for young Jamie Sullivan the next restart my um, I knew I was gonna do it <laughs> Jamie Skinner I almost said Mike Skinner he and Connor Mosack raced hard and here you see where Mosack in that black car number 28 really lost ground uh, he struggled to get off turn two on the next lap that allowed Skinner to get away we watched a hard, hard race here between Nicholas Noggle and Jet Nolan, also the 43 of Daniel Dye, the 51 of Hayden Sprague. Watch this race. Man, that should have been an accident. Because they both, once they made contact, kicked out sideways, and again it went three wide. Noggle and Jet Nolan uh, made more contact. Uh, I don't know how many times they got together during this race, but when it was all said and done, Jamie Skinner able to hold off the hard-charging Connor Mosack to take his second win of the World Series. Tried to hand you the wireless to go down and interview because I've talked to the same two drivers in first and second about every night this week. I thought, I'm going to make Allen go down. Well, you're going to be going down here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be uh, 
pull and track duty for the uh, Florida Modifieds. And actually, I'm going to step aside and let Connecticut's Connor Sullivan join you for the call of the Tour Top Modified races. I know there are a lot of folks uh, up in New England and the Northeast that love Connor. And uh, we love Con Dog, Connie, whatever you want to call him. But uh, Connor will be alongside you for the call for the Tour Modifieds. And then we'll have the Supers. Three races yet to go tonight. Florida Modifieds have lined up on the pit road. And look at those two that have lined up at the beginning end of pit road there. 78 of Travis Eddy in the 15 of Timmy Moore. And they have been fast this week. In fact, finishing first and second in the big 75 lapper a couple nights ago. You know, I'm looking on NASCAR.com right now, and you'll find this interesting, Adam. Austin Dillon says the next generation car that we're going to see uh, debut in the 2021 Daytona 500. Austin Dillon says it drives like a super late model. We might see a lot better racing then if that's the case, because we have seen some great super late model races not only here at New Smyrna Speedway, but throughout the country. And glad that you're watching with us tonight here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. Remember, if you have any comments about tonight's racing action, use hashtag, hashtag track pass on any of your social media outlets. Knock on wood, hopefully uh, we'll be all right here, but apparently rain up in Daytona. And uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to prevent them from racing in the duels tonight, but hopefully it's allowing you to join us for some great racing. A veteran Augie Grill, much better last night in the 112. 66, Jerry Simons, a driver that switched cars. Looks like he brought the old one back. Yeah, brought the one that he ran last night. And then the Burger Man. Yeah, this guy. The Hamburglar. Wayne Parker. Three second place finishes to start the week. Since then, he struggled a little bit, and he's actually switched back to the car that he started the week with. Which seemed to perform better. The one that he drove last night, he said, I can barely keep it on the track. He said, I'm terrible. I'm going to have to quit racing or something. I can't keep this car on the track. And then he realized the rear end was going out in it, and only one wheel was spinning. So the, uh, the rear end had given up, so he was only getting power to one tire, hence making him want to spin out. Uh, that is the reason he has gone back to his other car. I don't know about you, but I hate when my rear end goes out. And most people do, yes, Alan, especially last night, Wayne Parker. Don't have that problem if you have front-wheel drive, you know. what they say. Travis Eddy in the 78 points leader for this World Series. Had his worst finish of the World Series here last night. And now he's going to start on the pole. <laughs> that might be a bad sign for the competition since he won the first three times the Florida Modifieds were on track. Travis Eddy is on the pole. He said it's his car has been decent the last couple nights. And I talked to Timmy Moore and he said the same thing. He said, really? Not a lot wrong with our car last night. It's just hard to pass right now with this rubber that's on the track and the combination of the tire that they are running. And, and I heard a few different drivers say the same thing in this class. And Travis Eddy and Timmy Moore are first and second place finishers a couple nights ago in that big 75 lapper. They start on the front row. So the rest of the field, they have their work cut out for them. But, I mean, we've seen it can be done. Uh, Bill Burba, unfortunately, last night, Swinner, he had some engine problems today, so he's not able to go today. As Adam said, he took you through the top two starters. Starting back in third is the car number 51 from Houston, Texas of Zach Knowles, rolling off fourth out of Hayden, Alabama, Dolomite, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, wherever you want to say in Alabama, Augie Grill in the 112. Jerry Simons out of New Smyrna Beach, Florida, starting fifth, and he is third in the standings, but 34 points behind. Starting six, Wayne Parker. He's second in the points to Travis Eddy, 14 behind, so definitely still within striking distance. Grand Island, Florida's Bobby Blake in the car number 75 will start seven from Pauline, Texas. 12 of Scooter Bates rolls off eight. 
Taking a look at positions 9 and 10 for row 5, Rick Morris out of New Castle, Ontario, Canada in the 90, and Galen Price out of Iowa in the 29, starting 10th, 11th, Norman Dismuke from Florida in the 16D. John White was scheduled to start in the 17 car in the 12th position. His transmission issues continued. They've had the transmission in and out of that car a number of times, and he wanted to thank everybody who helped him get to Florida this year in that beautiful 17 car, but could never get the thing to shift, and I believe his World Series is coming to an early end, and he was really disappointed but thankful for all of those that helped him get here. And David LeBeau, Daytona Beach, Florida driver in the 16L, will start 13th tonight as the wave lap has taken place. Pretty decent crowd as we've talked about on hand. Lights are still on the pace car, so we're not going green quite yet. I love that wave lap. We do it at a lot of the short tracks around the country, whether they be dirt or pavement. And, you know, the drivers wave back to the fans to say thank you for coming out. The fans wave to the drivers to thank them for putting on the presentation of the event tonight. And I think it gets the drivers fired up whenever they look there in the stands and see the folks waving at them and excited about what they're about to do. And they are about to go green one lap from now. Ralph Miller, the chief starter at New Smyrna Speedway. I think for each of the speed weeks that I've been here over the past 10 years on the starter stand, lets them know the next time around they're going green. And I think our invert was a four tonight. But with last night's winner, Bill Burba scratching, that moves Travis Eddy onto the pole. So that worked out nicely for him. Burba's World Series. And talking to Bill Berber earlier, I think coming to an end, they don't want to take a chance of blowing that engine. He's heard a knock in that engine, and it got worse and worse despite a win last night. As the 78 of Eddie, the 15 of Timmy Moore come to green, and it's a big start for Eddie on the inside lane. Moore will try to fight back on the outside groove. We haven't seen this week, Travis Eddie. I don't think we've seen him start on the front row at all here in the World Series. So now he's going to be kind of dictating the pace here in this 35 lapper. And a lot of drivers aren't necessarily fond of doing that. They like to hold back. Cause, whoa, look at Wayne Parker. Dirt track, that 1W into turn one. Probably felt a little bit like last night when he could barely keep the car on the track that time. Maybe just missing the mark a little bit, trying to run that outside lane. It's been a little more single lane racing in this modified class than the other classes. And... Again, the drivers contribute that to just trying to get used to that different tire. It's a slick this year, but it's still a narrow tire, and it's a harder compound than what they were running with the treaded tires over the last couple of years. They say, and I talked to Timmy Moore, I said, you guys still putting new tires on this car every night? And he says, we are. He says, I'm not so sure with this hard compound that it's really making much of a difference, but he said, if everyone else is putting new tires on, we aren't going to be the guys that don't. And he's running in the second spot right now. Watching the battle here between the 15 of Timmy Moore and the 112 of Augie Grill. And, you know, the other thing that we've heard from Travis Eddy and a couple of drivers, but it seems like since the Tour Type Modified started racing here on Monday night at New Smyrna, that whatever compound of Hoosier Buy Supplies they're running, it's just kind of changed the racetrack here for these Florida modified drivers. Augie Grill has a really good race car right now. He's trying to make a move on Timmy Moore. Moore, who we've seen in a 57 car, which is his own car, pick up a World Series championship a few years ago. Started driving for this 15 team a year or so ago at the World Series when Robert Deal decided he didn't want to race anymore. So Timmy Moore has been campaigning this one as well as his own car. He attempted to uh, race at... Pensacola's Snowball Derby at Five Flags Speedway and got caught up in some liquid put down by Donnie Hamrack when he blew an engine and Timmy Moore had nowhere to go, slid through the oil and slammed the wall. Watch those two battle nose to tail second and third on the racetrack. Moore and Augie Grill. What a lead right now though for Travis City just seven laps into this race. He's already got a two second advantage over this battle for second, and I would say Augie Grill, the quicker he can get around Timmy Moore, at least it may give him some hope that he could race with Travis Eddy here a little bit later on. If for nothing else, it puts him in position if there is a yellow to start alongside Eddie for a restart. Talked to Travis earlier today, said, you having any fun? He said, always having fun. And 
He said the last couple nights you haven't run real well. I said, you know, you started off with three victories, which was the most in a row in this class to start a World Series since 1993. And he said, yeah, the track has just changed a little bit. Some other guys have picked up the pace and said he just hasn't been as good. He said he was making some changes to the car, and whatever changes they've made seems to have worked because he is laying good, uh, really good laps down right now, pulling away from the pack. Augie Grill there in the 112 again continues to look down to the inside of Timmy Moore as they head back down the back straightaway. You see the 78 of Eddie as he works out of turn number four. And Grill trying his best to work around that 15 car that Timmy Moore just slid out of turn four. Well, he was spinning the tires up in that outside lane up toward the walls. They work around Galen Price, nose to tail, second and third. Timmy Moore and Augie Grill, closest battle on the racetrack, continues to be for that second spot. As we complete lap number 12, 23 laps to go in this 35-lap race. And not to jinx them. Oh, they made a little bit of contact there. Sorry, Adam. That's all right. As I say not to jinx them, I said this has been the cleanest class all week <laughs> as far as consistency. And a lot of that is these are veteran drivers. There are no young kids. A lot of experienced drivers behind the wheel of these race cars. And I think that plays a big part in it. I think it plays a huge part in it. Lots of times, especially with the pro late models, you're seeing a lot of young drivers that have just graduated from legends cars or, um, you know, midgets, a, a smaller type race car, and they're usually early in their racing career. Not so much here with these Florida modifieds. Jerry Simons in the 66, running fifth, Wayne Parker in the one, running sixth. Wayne Parker had a good start to the week, second, second, and second. Since then, he's been struggling, and he's right now outside the top five. Would like to get around Simons. This car, as we talked about earlier this week, Parker's car has much less horsepower than that other car he drove the last few nights, and you can see a difference. He gets pulled down the straightaway a little bit in this car. The other car, he's doing the pulling, but could just never get the finish he wanted with the other car, and some of that was the rear end issue he had last night. It's odd that we haven't seen Jerry Simons and Wayne Parker not only in Victory Lane, but be more competitive here at the World Series. As you mentioned, Wayne Parker in the one there started the World Series off right there in Travis Eddy's tire tracks. But as the week has gone on, he has just fallen farther and farther behind. And Jerry Simons is pretty much you know, maintained around fourth, fifth, and sixth all week. Travis Eddy continues to lay down some good laps, and he's built a straightaway lead up on Timmy Moore. 4.5 seconds, as you see at the top of the screen. They work around Norman Dismuke in the 16 car. Halfway mark has been reached. 18 in, 17 to go. Now 16 at the line this time. I think Augie Grill in that 112 may be a little bit faster. But I don't think, unless Travis said he has some sort of problem, he's got almost a five-second advantage over the 15 there of Timmy Moore, and that is tremendous in this type of race. Thursday night action from the World Series, getting ready for the Richie Evans Memorial 100 for the Tour Type Modifieds tomorrow night. Then, of course, the big 100-lap event on Saturday night is for the super late models. So racing action has been very, very good all week long. Last night, the exclamation point on the week so far with that tour-type modified race and a photo finish at the line that so many people are talking about on social media, whether it be Twitter, Facebook. It's been all over social media today, just amazed at that finish. And not just amazed at the finish because of how close it was, but how clean those two drivers ran each other. Yeah, I, I think that is, is what has stuck out as much or more than that top finish is that they were able to race one another so cleanly. And we'll see the Tour Modifieds coming up here at the Florida Modifieds. You know, we just saw a, a shot there of our leader, Travis Eddy. He has worked up to over a straightaway advantage over Timmy Moore, who has been able to put a little bit of distance between he and Augie Grill as we watch this battle now back from fifth. 
Jerry Simons, the 66. Wayne Parker in the 1W. Parker kind of misses his mark a little bit down in turn three, ends up in the third lane, but keeps it in the right direction. He has some breathing room between himself and the car behind him, so he's able to maintain the spot that he's in in sixth place, but not the run that Wayne Parker was wanting tonight. You see the rear yeah. rotors glowing on that car. Yep, I was just about to mention that, how bright those rear rotors are on that car number one and you can actually see when he applies the brakes they're a little red here as he works down the back straightaway but watch the end of the back straightaway and you'll see those light up it's getting a little tighter though back for third now Zach Knowles in the 51 closing in on Augie Grill and yeah, Knowles has closed the gap to a couple of car lengths Knowles was happiest with his car last night said it's the best car he's had all week long yeah, and, you know, I think he has set some realistic expectations for for that team. They're running a, a crate motor, and they're down considerably on horsepower compared to some of these other cars. But where this car comes in is now. There's seven laps to go, and whereas some of these drivers have burned their tires up or the setup is going away, uh, he just kind of stays consistent. And he's right on that yellow line. The car is handling great. Closing on Augie Grill. Upper left of the screen, your leader, Travis Eddy, on the exit of turn number four. Augie Grill running in the third spot, just now exiting turn four. So Eddy has a straightaway lead on him. Plus, and Timmy Moore, the lead has grown over the second place car of Moore to six seconds. He continues to stretch it out. Five to go for Travis Eddy. Beaverton, Michigan driver out front of this Florida Modified event tonight. Tour type Modifieds and super late models yet to go this evening as Travis Eddy, son of the polar bear Mike Eddy, really has made a name for himself in the Modifieds. He's run some outlaw super late models and, and has run the run a template late model for a while. And this Modified where he's really made a home in over the last five years or so. It's close, not quite a half track advantage for Travis Eddy right now in this 78 car, but really making a statement tonight after faltering in the last couple of races, struggled last night. Boy, has he come back in a big way. And as The Rock would say, he has left smacking down. That he has exactly done. Looking for his fourth win of the week. Two laps to go. For Travis Eddy. He can really cruise control at the last lap and a half. Yeah, I think he could put it in neutral. He could shut it off and save some fuel. <laughs> Six and a half seconds that lead. That lead just continues to grow as he is laying down consistent solid laps. He's caught almost Wayne Parker, who is in the sixth position. And Wayne Parker on the tail end of the lead lap. Heading to turn three. Making his way to turn four. At How Racing, number 78. Looks to the inside of Parker coming across the line. Parker finishes on the lead lap, but barely as Travis Eddy claims win number four of the week. Timmy Moore takes second. Augie Grill takes third. Zach Knowles finishes fourth. Jerry Simons was fifth tonight. Wayne Parker was sixth, tail end of the lead lap. Bobby Blake, Scooter Bates, Norman Dismute, Galen Price, David LeBeau, Rick Warnes. Completing those that were in our Florida Modified feature this evening. But Travis Eddy, I asked him again earlier if he was having fun. He said yes, always. And tonight, that fun level, the meter pegged again. Dominating from the front row. Benefit fitting from a very good starting spot. And the driver he couldn't catch, he couldn't get around. A couple nights ago for the big 75 lap feature was Timmy Moore, and he ran away from him tonight, winning this one by 6.485 seconds. As Travis Eddy having one of those dominant speed weeks. And we've seen a few drivers have, but not many because of the competition is strong and all the veteran drivers in this Florida modified class. Just a couple down nights for Eddie, and one of the down nights was a second place run. So they can't get much better than this guy has been this week as Travis Eddy gets ready to celebrate once again.
as we send it down to we'll take feet. it down as Travis said he climbs out his fourth win of the World Series and he'll take his head and neck restraint off and I don't want to say that you've struggled the last uh, couple of races I, I think last night was was probably a frustrating race for you but man oh man you did a great job tonight of stinking up the show congratulations thank you uh last night was kind of embarrassing for us with how good we ran the rest of the week so we thought about it late into the night on what we needed to make for changes and went to work on it this morning made a couple changes still only hot left at once because we were real confident in what we did and this thing was just hooked up and on rails tonight we were just running qualifying laps the whole time basically what was the biggest difference for you tonight? I know last night you said that you felt like the uh, the torch hot modified rubber kind of threw you guys for a loop. We uh, we went around and just got more grip in the car and got it back to where I had good drive off because that's where we were killing them all week and we had it down good tonight where I could just drive off straight and not, o not abuse the rear tires, not overheat anything. It was just on rails. Travis Eddy, he's closing in on another World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing Championship as we come back now to our third place finisher, Timmy Moore. And Timmy, uh, I know second's good, but boy, uh, that 78 car was in a different zip code tonight. Yeah, it was. It's a, it's a lot about track position this week. Uh, these tires are really tough for everybody. Uh, it seems we all had our nights uh, where we're on and off. And um, I just I just couldn't get that forward drive that I needed tonight. So uh, for Saturday night, we'll need to do a little bit of adjusting and see if we can't make that a little better. But um, cars seem to get better over the course of the race once the tires uh, sized up. But, you know, it's all good. Glad he uh, got another win, and uh, we'll come back Saturday night and try and get us another one. Timmy Moore going to look for another good run, maybe even another win as we come back to our third-place finisher, Augie Grill. And Augie, for a while there, it looked like you might be able to get that 15 car, but it uh, looked like the car went away just a little bit. No, it actually ran faster at the end of the race than it did at the start. Just uh, track position is so big with these tires. They, they're so hard, they don't really fall off, and... Somebody can pin you in by, behind them for the whole race. And, uh, I mean, the 78 car's had a hard time a couple of nights when he's had to start behind. And uh, it's just frustrating. <laughs> Got a really good car and can't go nowhere with it. Let's do a little bit of a super late model preview here. It looked like you uh, have gotten that 112 car with the super late models a little bit better. Yeah, we're a lot better. Uh, kind of messed up and got it too tight qualifying. But uh, we'll start off six tonight. And, uh, See what happens. Uh, 35 lap races, it's hard to make a whole lot happen, but we'll see how it goes. All right, Augie Grill, we'll see him in the night camper tonight following the tour type modified race. As we get ready to go, we'll throw it back up top to Adam Mackey, who will be joined by Connor Sullivan. Thank you very much, Alan, who will be watching this race from down on pit road, seeing all the action along the pit stalls. But in the 35-lap feature, shouldn't be too much work down there as Connor Sullivan joins us tonight for the Tour Type Modifieds, a modified class which you love and hold so close to your heart. You get to see him tonight, and the action this week in that class has just been unmatched. It has been unbelievable. I, I said this last night um, after the John Blue the Third Memorial. I don't think I've ever seen that uh, much passing in a single modified race. You know, you even go to some of the top modified tracks um, up north, um, like Stafford, like Thompson, even some of the bowl rings like Seekonk in Star Speedway where you got some of the top races there. It was just unbelievable how you could go lap to lap to lap and somebody would be making a pass out there. The competitiveness of this particular field that we got here this year has just been absolutely um, unrivaled. As, again, you got a great mix of drivers as well. But really, it's just been amazing how, of course, um, you got got um, the New Englanders uh, like Anthony Nocella from Massachusetts have been able to match some of the guys from further down south, like Craig Lutz from Long Island, and, of course, Matt Hurstman from Pennsylvania. Let's talk about Nocella and that week he's had. He's been very close to sweeping the first three races. Do you remember just a couple of nights ago he was leading in a restart? Lutz kind of put him up in the third lane or so on a restart, and that's what pushed Nocella back. Without that yellow flag late in the race that night, 
and that maybe subsequent shove up the track, he could be three for three. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the good thing about Nacella, though, he is a wheel man, to say the least. Uh, he's um, got actually quite on um, the wide array of rides throughout his career. Um, probably in particular, he's been able to do some dirt midgets. He's even gone to the Chili Bowl um, a few times as well. Um, he's also won in winged midgets up in the Northeast um, on the Northeast Midget Association. So he really knows some great car control. But uh, I'll tell you what, though, Adam. He was not happy um, after Tuesday night. So I got a chance to talk to him um, after the race, and he really came back um, on Wednesday night with a lot of fire in his belly. And I think the most, the thing he was most thankful for, um, other than winning the race, was that he got a clean race against Matt Hirschman. You know, he did. Matt gave him room on the bottom, and he gave Matt plenty of room on the outside lane. Just one night earlier. Nocella got shoved all the way up into the third lane late in the race that cost him the win. So as a driver, with he being on the inside, he had the chance to do the same thing to Hirschman that maybe Lutz did to him. He never did it. He never pushed him high. And how many times in a race like that would you have thought the guy on the inside would have pushed the guy on the outside? Coming to the checkered on that last lap in three and four, it's usually fair game at that point, and most people wouldn't think anything of it had he taken him up into the third group. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, it just shows the kind of driver that Anthony Nocell is. He's been one that has been brought up on respectful racing uh, by yourself. We'll get some respectful racing back, and that's the same way Matt Hirschman was brought up too. So, you know, they come from very, two very different parts um, of uh, the racing geography. Uh, Massachusetts and, of course, Pennsylvania. They may seem pretty close on the map, but they are worlds away, despite the fact that, again, these two try the same kind of race cars out there. But it is amazing how uh, it, how philosophies can kind of cross over as well. And I think in looking at all the social media comments today, whether it be on Twitter, Facebook, when they watch the replay of our coverage last night, some people said, oh, you can tell Hirschman won by six inches. Some people said, oh, you could tell that Nocella won by six inches. It's kind of whatever side they happen to be on. Watching it from a broadcast standpoint last night where I didn't have any skin in the game either way, I said, I don't want to have to make this call. I'm glad I'm not an official tonight. But what most of those people said, regardless of who they felt was the victor, is they said, what a clean race, and that's the way racing should be. Yep, and it was really cool to see, considering, of course, you know, you look at um, all the racing that's going on um, up the street um, uh, at Daytona. Of course, the spotlight the last three nights has been on the new Smyrna Speedway. And boy, oh boy, if there was ever a time for the modifieds to come through and shine, it was last night. And people took notice across the board. It was awesome. And these modifieds over the last three, four years down here have started really bringing solid fields down every year. Some of that could be kind of uh, given credit to the, the improved tech here over the last four or five years. Some of it could be the shorter week where we have seen it begin on Monday for the Modifieds and go through Friday instead of trying to get them down here the previous three days as well. It shortens up the week, gives them a chance not to have to take two weeks off of work, and I think that's paid big dividends as well. It's definitely a, a combination of factors, um, but definitely the two biggest um, have been, uh, of course, the shortening of the schedule. I think that's um, the most visible. But, again, uh, it's that behind the scenes um, with um, the tech, uh, the direction that the inspectors have taken the last couple of years and how the rules have just begun to all encompass all these great different series that you see, not just up in the northeast, but even in the southeast as well. Drivers are buckled in. You hear some of the cars have fired. Ben Dodge doing the starting lineup, I believe, for the fans in the stands Never here. gets old. No, it does Never not. Gets and, old. of course, we'll be back with him tomorrow night uh, calling the starting lineup and telling the fans about the drivers in the field for the Richie Evans Memorial, talking about that race and its history over the years here at New Smyrna Speedway. And that's a 100-lap race tomorrow night. And, again, everybody's favorite going into that event has been Mr. Second Place this week, Matt Hirschman. He's finished second and all three nights, and you know he's the number one favorite going in tomorrow night. It is amazing that Matt Hirschman has not won this on week um, here at the New Smyrna Speedway. He's just been so close. Of course, uh, there was a moment where last night, um, after the race, you'll recall, he drove into victory lane. You figured, yep, okay, it's over. Oh, not so fast. And 
I'll tell you what, um, also big props to the officials running the show here at New Smyrna Speedway. They took their time last night. They made no sound decisions. They took their time, and they took a look at a lot of sources as well. Of course, uh, the ultimate decision um, in the end came down to the flag man because simply because he's got the best perspective down there. He does. He's got a good look at it up above the flag stand looking straight down on the finish line. Um, I'm not so sure if Hirschman was declared the winner that there would have been a big argument the other way. It was that close. It was I basically think it was, I think what I been. saw. It was pretty much a tie. I mean, either way it goes last night, I think that race, just such a good race, first of all. And they ran side by side, not just coming to the strike, but for lap after lap after lap before that. I lost count how many laps um, the they were in side by side for it was at least three but i think it, the number may be like five or six i don't remember because it seemed again, like even more than that I yeah mean, they just continue to run side by side it was a great great event and tonight it's a short run you know and a big thing about these cars in a 76 lapper or a 100 lapper here is there's so much movement going forward and then that car runs out of tires and he drops back a guy like Blew it last night, led for a while. He came up just, what, 10, 15 laps shy, I think, you know, just ran out of car job. with about 10 or 15 laps. He came from, what, 11th last night? Yep. Catalano came from 15th. I mean, the moves they made through the field were amazing. Yep, uh, first starting with Tommy Catalano, he had to do it in a backup car, actually running his mother's um, car out there, Amy Catalano, of course. So she had to sit out the nights. In fact, Tommy, they, he loved that car so much, he's back with it. They were originally playing to swap motors, Um uh, to the 54 car again back in that's a brand new car but it was a good combination for him and as for jimmy blewett i talked to him today i think after uh, the um, inversion after qualifying it was an eight car inversion anthony nocella actually set quick time in qualifying but jimmy blewett gets the pole after the eight car inversion i'll tell you what he must be licking his chops right now because he told me that if he has the same car as he did last night over 35 laps I don't know if anybody's going to be able to get by him. If he has the same car he did on the first night or the second night. I mean, he's passed more cars probably this week than anybody has because he starts deep in the field, immediately starts picking up positions. Tonight, he doesn't have to do that, and he doesn't have to worry about tire conservation or any of that, any strategies. Just go out, run fast, because it's just a 35-lap race. Yep, and we see Kyle um, Ebersol there in the second position. He'll be lining up alongside Blewett on the front row. But I think the guy to watch um, may... Maybe Patrick Emmerling, though. He's going to be lining up third. He's had a strong car. He knows how to win down here. He's won down here in the past. He's a two-time um, champion on the Race of Champions Asphalt Modified Series up in New York State in Pennsylvania. And he's even got uh, a win on the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour down at Bristol Motor Speedway. He knows how to win. He knows how to win down here. He's just been needing some luck. And he got a little bit of luck with this um, inversion. I think um, going off on the second row, we might see a good battle in the opening laps um, between Blewett and Emerling. But, of course, it's only going to be a matter of time before you see guys um, like Craig Lutz, Matt Hirschman, Anthony Nocell rise up through the field. And one more guy to keep an eye on, too. He's going to be rolling off seven there. Um, you see the yellow stripe on his car, and that is Eric Goodale from Long Island. Uh, he showed a lot of speed last night. He tore through the field, and I talked to him as well before on the race. And just like Jimmy Blewett, he is confident in his equipment over 35 laps. Eric Goodale struggled the first two nights, had terrible finishes, not the type of finishes we're used to Goodale having down here, 19th and 13th. And I talked to him yesterday, and he said, we've got our problems fixed. We had brake issues. And we had some other issues that have given us some problems, but now the car is good. Last night, definite improvement, finished sixth. Then tonight, a qualified second, so he is going to be good. And the uh, only trouble he had last night was the same trouble that Calon Blewett had. He used up his tires. Jimmy Blewett starts on the pole. We've talked about him, as well as Kyle, Kyle Ebersol, who starts on the outside. Patrick Emerling and David Sapienza, they start in row two. Sapienza in the 36 has been decent this week. couple of 12s and then a fifth-place finish last night for a former winner of the Turkey Derby. Sappy ends a sixth place in the standings. Row number three, Craig Lutz and Matt Hirschman. Those drivers have both been very good this week in the top five in our points, rounding out our top eight positions in the qualifiers that were best earlier tonight. Eric Goodale starting in seventh and Anthony Nocella starting in eighth. Yep, Ben's rounding out the top ten. We're going to have... 
Mike Willis Jr., the 2019 Modified Racing Series champion up there um, in New England. And he's begun to rack up some wins up there in the Northeast. Very good to see. And J.R. Pertuccio, he's also won um, down here at the New Smyrna Speedway. He won back in 2017, I believe it was. Um, they've had um, a bit of calamity this week as they originally lost um, the motor in their primary car. Um, on Tuesday, so they actually went over to the backup car and heat wrecked that thing massively coming off turn four. That car is a total loss, but they managed to salvage the engine. They put it back in the primary car. They ran it last night, had a solid night. So, hey, if something happens with some of the leaders, don't count out J.R. Pertucci. Yeah, he's had three different combinations that he's run with. Started the first night with a white car, then he ran the black car because the white car had engines. Black car, he knocked off the right front, so he took the engine out of the black car, put it in the white car. So he's had three different combinations he's been behind the wheel of. So Bertruccio starts in the 10th spot tonight. Jeremy Gerstner from Wesley Chapel, Florida, in the 17th, starting in 11th. Eddie McCarthy in the 22 car, starting in the 12th spot. Row seven, this is going to be the one to watch outside the top 10. You got Tommy or Tyler Rifkema. Um, he's had some strong runs um, early on, as well as Tommy Calano again. We noted um, his uh, successes last night. I think he would have been a threat to win tonight, but he qualified again back in the field. 14th, going to be tough to do in a 35-lap race. Brett Maservi out of Massachusetts in the 45, starts in 15th. Anthony Cecily from New Jersey starts the 16th in the 16th spot. If you've also got um, Jim G Gavick there in the 17th spot. Jeff Gallup um, in the 18th pos uh, position also got his first win on the Modified Racing Series uh, this year. Then you got uh, Tyler Catalano in 19th. And then taking over the 23 car tonight will be Jimmy Zacharias, the former NASCAR New York State champion. 21st place starter in the number seven, Rich Parker. Paul Townsend out of Ontario, Canada, the 21 starting 22nd. 23rd, John Gerstner from Tampa, Florida. In the 55 car, and Adam LaCicero out of New Jersey in the 27, starting 24th. Another awesome field of tour-type modifieds. Get up to speed under some warm-up laps before the start of the race tonight. As these cars warm up, you see a finish from last night. Connor, let's walk them through it. Well, all right. Uh, of course, the high line here at New Smyrna, it's a little bit faster, but I'll tell you what, though, Anthony Nacelle, he was making this 92 car rotate on the inside, coming off the corner here. He has a bit of an edge. Here comes Hirschman, but it's not enough. Just by, I think, a fraction of an inch, Anthony Nacelle was able to come away with it. And just one of the most remarkable modified finishes you will ever see. I did receive the official word on what the difference in victory was earlier tonight from Ben Dodge. He won by a whisker. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right as well. But, yeah, it's just amazing how really just by the naked eye last night, you just could not tell who it was. For the longest time, I thought it was going to be a tie. I thought they were going to have to go to the rule book on that one as well. But they didn't. Uh, and they ultimately declared that it was Nocella. But I'll tell you what, after, again, after fishing second, a total of three times this week, Matt Hurst, when he's going to be hungry for it. I think it's going to be interesting to watch him go um, up to or try to get up to the front from that sixth starting position. Sometimes Ben Dodge says, place your bets now. Well, I've placed mine, and I have a hard time betting against that 21 car of Jimmy Blewett on the outside of the front row with the way he's run the previous nights. He hasn't won, but he led a lot of laps last night, and he had to do it by passing a lot of race cars. He starts in row number one on the outside lane. Hey, you know what they call Jimmy Blewett, right? Showtime. Well, guess what? It's going to be showtime at the front here um, with Jimmy Blue, of course, leading on uh, the field to the green flag here tonight. Just moments away as the fans have waved the drivers off now for this 35 lap feature. In the point standings, Anthony Nosella winning two of three races so far leading by only two points over Matt Hirschman because of his consistency of second-place finishes every night. Third place in the standings. I don't have on this sheet, so I'm going to have to look it up <laughs> on the points. How about that? Ryan Priest, that's because he's not here tonight, so he's going to fall. But in reality, it is Greg Lutz on the fourth-place man officially, mm -hmm. but, of course, on thirds as he's going to be 
believe it was 28 points um, out some um, coming tonight. So I think it's something that's going to have to happen uh, with the top two in points right now uh, for Lutz to maybe have um, a shot at. Of course, he had um, a tough night um, last night um, at the end. He had a good car. He didn't get in, into any crash or anything, but he did fade. It says, we are one lap away from going green here, Adam. Tour type modified to put on three great shows so far, especially last night when they don't get any better. Who will win tonight? Who will find victory lane in the next to last night for the tour type modifieds this week? Tomorrow night, the Richie Evans Memorial 100 from New Smyrna Speedway. Tonight, just 35 laps. It's a sprint to the finish. As here comes the 21 of Blewett and the 5 of Ebersol coming to green. Field looking very smart here as they come off turn number four. Jimmy Blewett, a fast start, and there's the green flag. We're underway for 35 laps as Blewett gets out in front. Here comes Ammerling to the inside of Kyle Eversol for second, but Eversol trying to make it three wide. And meanwhile, Craig Lutz trying to work that outside line. Caution is out as the field slows in three and four. Going to restart as we bunch the field back up. Going to be a complete restart. Don't see any issues on the racetrack. Potentially just not liking the start in turn four. I thought Blewitz might have gotten a bit of a jump on that one as well. And I think race control is in agreement here. Uh, I think Blewitz a little bit too eager. Of course, we talked about his aggressive nature, um, just really going door to door out there. But I think it kind of came back to bite him here. We're going to get the official word in just moments from... Speed 51's Mark Keeler, and he says yes, a false start as he ran over next door to speak to race officials and race director Glenn Luckett. Going to try it again next time around as Blewett, he wants the advantage. He wants to lead the field into one and two. He'll be tough to pass if he gets out there, and you saw Emerling was taking advantage as well as he got to the inside of Eversol. Got a little tight, though, when he and Eversol made some contact off of turn two. Well, that was the weird thing, though, is that he, despite Blewett's jump out there, uh, Kyle Eversol, Patrick Emerling, they were quick to respond. Craig Lutz, he was go challenging for second after starting uh, fifth on that aboard start, but they're going to call it back, so it's going to be take two. Field much more even this time as they come off turn number four. Come up to speed. Green's in the air. And we are now underway here for the tour type modifieds for 35 laps as ever saw a bit of an edge coming up turn two, maybe a bit of a wiggle from Jimmy Blewett as they race down into turn number three. We see Blewett fighting Eric. back on the inside lane as they exit turn number four. Leader of lap one, trouble. Ripkema around three, four, and five cars involved. Heaviest damage looks to be on the 32 of Ripkema. Yeah, we see. Right front down on Brett Missouri's number 45. Looks like a big scramble in the back. Again, 35 laps at him. Everyone jockeying for position um, as soon as they can. Take a look at the right front suspension. It looks pretty straight on that car. You agree. Definitely a right front tire down. So he's going to try to get to the pits as quickly as he can and see if he can get a tire change and hopefully. Boy, the suspension is fine. Boy, it is a miracle that the suspension is intact. As we see Anthony Cecily coming on to pit road. Looks like heavy left rear damage to the 16. I think they are taking the first lap. Most drivers were across the line when the yellow flag did wave as they beat on the left rear of that car. There's the Ripkema car. The 32 started tonight, 13th position. Now they work on the right front. They'll check and make sure it's okay after they put the tire on. Yeah, good job by Ripkema uh, to back up as well. Uh, take it slow and not risk um, damaging that car as we see Reservi in to change the flat right front he has on his car. Ripkema in the 32. He's had a tough week last night, especially 6th, 6th, and then 18th last night after... The plug came out of the rear end and he was leaking fluid. They black flagged him and you could see a big puddle on the pit road area after he pulled in. Yeah, I, somebody um, here in the tower earlier said um, uh, that gear oil on the track, not a good combination as we take a look here. Ooh, they got three wides as Missouri got into the left rear of Rifkema and boy, oh boy, lucky that wasn't a much bigger crash out there. There was a lot of contact being made, but the way it worked out, nobody got into the wall. It was so close. The car that was really going to 
hit hard into the wall, I think. If he wasn't up on another car, it was the 21 of Gavick back there. Now, t- looks like Tommy Calano, at least from that angle, he, I don't know how he managed to miss it. It looks like he just kept his foot in it. He swung around the outside. Let's take a look at the slow-mo here. Yeah, Missouri got up into the side of Ripkema, and then all heck broke loose. Boy, Catalano, he might have gotten a shot in the Nerf bar. He somehow kept it off the wall. They made some it just wide driving. enough up there. Yeah, some great driving by Tommy Catalano up there, as we see uh, where Anthony Cecily got the damage to his car. As you see Alan Lucistro and Rich Parker. They managed to wall her down and avoids all the chaos on the inside. 34 laps to go. We did get one lap completed. Ralph Miller letting them know that next time around we're going to go back to green. As we see, a little interesting strategy play here by Jimmy Blewett. He's going to switch to the outside line for this restart. Uh, Row two, it's still the same behind him as you'll have Emerling on the inside, Sapienza on the outside, and then Lutz and Hirschman behind. And then you see both Anthony Vassell and Eric Goodale there in the fourth row. So, I'm, yeah, the butterflies are still high I'm out there, to say the least. Sure, and we've only completed one lap, 34 to go. The leader officially is Blewett. He chooses the outside lane, and he's ready for a restart in turn number four. Ebersol on the inside, Emerling, Sapienza in row number two. Green is out. Good start for the front row, especially for Blewett. Yeah, Blewett, um, I think he read it perfectly that time. He got the jump, but was able to do it in the box. It's a bit of a twitch from Eversol. Blewett's able to get away. Meanwhile, side by side uh, for a couple of rows there. You got Emerling and Sapienza side by side for position number three. Emerling on the low side. Sapienza on the outside lane. You saw the five of Eversol get a little sideways going into turn one. He had Sapienza glued to the rear of that car. Hirschman looking for an opening. He doesn't want to be known as the guy who didn't win this year, despite three second-place finishes so far. And he's going to try to get to the front a little earlier tonight as he goes for fourth. Hirschman giving Emerling a bit of a push past Sapienza. Meanwhile, Balford, the lead as Kyle Ebersol gets to the inside of Jimmy Blewett. Here's the enter turn three, but Blewett hanging top on the outside. But boy, oh boy, Ebersol with some grip on the inside. He gets oh. the, oh, and he gets turned into the outside wall. He tried to close the door a little bit going up the front straightaway into turn one. Maybe thinking he had the 21 cleared and maybe trying to get that angle down into turn one. And they bumped tires. It looked like the 21 of Blewett from what I was watching live was up against the wall about as far as he could go. And he just ran out of room as Eversol came up the track a little bit. And I'm sure we'll get to see that again. But that was at least what I could see watching live. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that was Eversol. They've uh, been mm. trying to get a handle on that car. I believe that's a brand new car, actually, that they brought down here to New Smyrna here in February. And he had a great run on Blewett. And I think he would have probably been able to clear him in one and two. But contact ensued before that. Yeah, just uh just a bit of a lack of patience, uh, perhaps, on the part um, of Kyle Eversol. Is, uh, and, that... and maybe not knowing that the 21 was still out there. He was barely out there on the right rear. It, it was very close, um, Adam, is Eversol. Again, you got 35 laps um, out here, and you definitely uh, want to try and get to seal the deal. But here we're going to take a look at the replay as Ebersol's taking the lead, giving room, it's getting tighter, getting tighter, and Ebersol maybe just squeezing the 21. There wasn't a lot of room on the outside of the 21. I don't think it blew it. Now we'll get a better angle here. This will show even more. Down the front stretch, he's holding his lane. He's up against the wall. He couldn't go any higher. And yeah. Ebersol just kind of turned right just far enough where they wheeled tires, and actually you could see Blewett getting closer and closer to the walls. We watch slow-mo. Watch where Blewett is going higher he knows he's getting squeezed he goes higher and he's up against the wall and just nowhere to go and Eversol closes the door great shots by our crew here on track pass on NBC Sports Gold couldn't yeah. get any better yeah Jeff Christensen giving us these shots up on the stand in turn one tell you what uh, blew it lucky to keep it off the wall there and he has not hit pit road yet so apparently the left front um, is still up on that car as we see Eversol um, climbing out as Boy, he had some high hopes. I hate to see it. Hate to see it because yeah. he had pulled off the pass. It looked like a great move, and just 
just not enough room out there as he got ready. I think he wanted to make sure and make his entry into turn one and try to keep his momentum up as much as possible, and that's tough to do on that inside lane. And by trying to round off turns one and two, he just kind of squeezed the 21 and blew it a little too much when the contact ensued. So we're still at one lap in with 34 to go, and the five of Ebersol, who may have been on his way to a victory, as good as that car looked in making the pass of Jimmy Blewett, now with issues. Yeah, it's disappointing to see, especially considering if you get damaged uh, this late in the week, that means you're at risk uh, for possibly not making the show for the biggest race of the week, which, of course, is coming up tomorrow with the Richie Evans Memorial. 100 laps here at the New Smyrna Speedway to wrap up the Tour Tech modified portion of World Series 2020. We want to make mention we do have four laps completed, four in and 31 laps to go. Our timing and scoring has been updated. Eversall was the leader on lap number four. But now things are really changed up and to the benefit of Jimmy Blewett, it looks like, as he is the leader. Yep, as we see Blewett out there, and how about Matt Hirschman, too? Just four laps, starting six, and he's up to third. Of course, he got some help um, from when Ebersol got turned into the wall there, but he has been quick to respond, and it's going to be very interesting to see what he can do against um, this front row out there, and of course, uh, Anthony Nacella, though, uh, who's been the winner as we get another look here. As again, Jimmy Blewett, just no place to go. Eversall trying to close the door, and he goes and gets caught up into the wall as we saw Tyler Ripkema spinning out there. Again, much, very lucky that this wasn't a much bigger crash at him. Big enough for the five, that's for sure, but it looks like everyone else, and you mentioned the 32 of Ripkema. I don't think any damage done there as we look again at another slow-mo replay. Blew it turning away, turning away, and just no room. And the 07 of Emerling was right there on the rear of the five of Ebersol as well. Yeah, I was just thinking that in Sapienza as well back there. Of course, he was on the outside line there as we see the field getting one to go from the flag stand. Tell you what, Sapienza's eyes probably got a little wide um, there, but... Uh, they've been making steady improvements to that car throughout the week, though, and he finally got a good qualifying run as well as a good draw, and we're seeing what he can do. Of course, um, Sapienza hurt at Wall Stadium last year, but that team did go to victory in the Musket 250 last year with Bobby Santos driving it, and I'll tell you what, it gave them a lot of confidence uh, coming out of the 2019 season. Emerling now in the 07 with a chance to race for the lead with your leader, Jimmy Blewett in the 21, back to green in turn four. Another good restart for Blewett. Watches Hirschman. Races with Sapienza in third and fourth. Little bit of contact between the two. It looked like there was a bit of a bobble from Emerly, but he was quick to respond, though, as he's going to keep it to the inside of Blewett. Ooh, they almost came together there. As Blewett, though, a nice run off of corner number four to maintain the lead. As we see Anthony Nacella now trying to make headway on the inside. From eighth place, Nacella up to fifth and for the lead. Emerling mounting a challenge to Jimmy Blewett. Boy, just fantastic racing all throughout the top ten here. Emerling, nice run on the inside through three and four. He'll have the lead at the line. He gives plenty of room to the 21 of Blewett in turn one and two. He's able to complete the pass. Blewett back in second. 60 of Hirschman running third and look at the draft. He's able to slingshot down into turn three side by side. Blewett going back for the lead with Emerling. These cars, they punch a big hole through the air. You get to a track like this. The drafting is just incredible to watch as we see Hirschman maintaining his presence in the third position, but he's got Craig Lutz hot on his heels, and we see Anthony Nacelli. He's been able to work his way into the top five. Lutz a winner this week in the 46, won just two nights ago, and he battles with Hirschman here for third. Nacelli and Lutz, they had that battle for the lead on the night that Lutz won a couple of nights ago when Nacelli got pushed up on a restart in that first and second turn. Now Nacelli after picking up three spots already in this race, looking to continue his move forward in fifth right now. Lutz, he looks the raciest right now as he is all over the back bumper of Matt Hirschman. Hirschman, he's known as a closer, but you cannot save too much here tonight as you got only 35 laps to get the job done as we are now 10 laps into the show. Oh, Lutz bobbles going into one, opens up the inside lane for Nacella. 
Behind them, Sapienza looks on. We've completed the first 10 laps of the race. 25 to go, 24 this time, and leading the way is Emerling. We talked about how classy Anthony Nocell is, but I don't think he's going to cut Craig Lutz any slack after what happened between these two on Tuesday night when Lutz forced him up the track to take the lead. Nocella with a slight advantage when it comes to the championship battle this week. He makes the move, keeps it on the bottom side by side with a 46 of Lutz. He has the advantage at the line for the fourth position. A 92 car has been outstanding all week long. It continues tonight and three more positions in front of him between perhaps he and a third win this week. Well, Nocella, he was so good on the inside line. He didn't even have to use those right side nerf bars as he now sets his sights on his points rival right now, Matt Hirschman. 22 laps to go. Nocella, the car we're watching. He's picked up five spots now. Lutz is back in the fifth position. Nocella's up to fourth. Sapienza behind them. Leading the way up front is Emerling, but Kind of nose to tail single file right now, closing on the mid mark of the race. Yeah, everybody's kind of sizing each other up right now. As again, if this were a longer race, this is about the time it would be go time for Matt Hirschman in the third position. As we see Nocella gapping Craig Lutz a little bit, and we see Emily, he's got a bit of an advantage over Blewitz, but Blewett keeping him in check. But as for Blue, he's got problems of his own right now. As Matt Hirschman, he is still trying to fill up his fear. See a couple of different battles going on throughout our top 10. 92 of Nocella, 46 of Lutz, nose to tail. Fourth and fifth. Nocella needs to continue his move. We're going to be halfway coming up soon. 17 complete. 18 to go next time around. They'll get the cross flag signifying halfway. There's Blewett second place, Hirschman third place. Hirschman started to make some moves early in this race, coming from the sixth starting position, but his moves have slowed here as of late. You know, Blewett's just doing a good job. He's hitting his marks out there and also denying Hirschman the room he needs to work either on the outside or the inside. To get around Rich Parker, who has gone down a lap. Parker in the number seven car, running in the 19th position. 24 drivers took the green flag in this race. Many of those still on the track racing, about 21 of those. So we see Patrick Emerling. He's won these 35 la lappers before. Uh, he's known as probably one of the more long distance racers now up in New York State on the ROC circuit, but they run a lot of 75 lappers out there. So I'm not too surprised to see that he can do well in one of these sprint races. Patrick Emmerling, he's been a familiar face at the World Series for a number of years now, always a competitor up in our top five, and Emmerling has driven a couple different cars this week. In fact, the first night he drove the car he's driving tonight. He's also driven his new tour modified car and kind of going back and forth. This one is a strong run, his best of the week so far, thanks to a pretty good starting spot as Blewett tries to close the gap. It's actually open, managed to open up a bit of a gap on Hirschman. Now Hirschman, he's got some trouble. What? That's the second lap that we've seen Matt Hirschman sort of wash up coming off turn four, and it's allowing Anthony Nacella to get a bit of a run on his back bumper. We've seen Hirschman, though, run some strange lanes. In fact, last night he was basically in the third groove, two and a half grooves up, making the move for the victory, at least trying to come up with a victory. And he battled hard up there. These drivers can run some different lanes with those wide tires. Yep, 15 inches some on those on tires. That's why they call them the ground pounders up North Adam as we see Greg Lutz doing a good job here. Really this top five that you see out here, these are, this has been the class of the field so far down here during the World Series. Of course, Hirschman and Nocella, they've been the class of the field so far. Of course, um, Greg Lutz, he kind of forced the issue on Tuesday nights, but uh, Patrick Emerling finally getting the luck um, that he's been looking for out there as he is continuing to maintain that gap over Jimmy Blewett. Hirschman, now he's opened up about two car lengths as he gets back to the bumper of Jimmy Blewett, but I don't know, it looks like when he gets close to Blewett, he, it looks like he's hitting a bit of a wall of the air that kind of gets on uh, the front end all squirrely out there. Officially right now, we've completed 26 laps. And it was nine laps to go. As you see, the 21 of Blewett 
and the 07 of Emerling, first and second. And there's Blewett and Hirschman running in the second and third positions. This has been a lot less passing tonight than we saw one night ago, but is it about to heat up? It looks like Hirschman's ready to mount a challenge. I think so too, seven to go out here as Hirschman, he is closed up. Maybe he was saving. Sometimes it's hard to read what Hirschman's up to, but he is right on the back bumper of Jimmy Blewett, and he's trying to force him up a little bit of a twitch from Blewett as Hirschman trying to look for that run down the front straight but he just can't get close enough now with six laps to go. It's go time. He's finished second three times and two of those times this week for a combined total of probably a half car length. He's ready to make a run. Looks to the outside again on Blewett. Can't quite do it. Crossing the line. Five laps to go for Emerling in the 07. Hirschman trying to carry as much speed as he can off turn number four, but he is running out of real estate. He has to check up in, or risk hitting that wall up there as now he swings again to the outside of Blewett as they cross the line with for four to go. Four laps to go. Blewett. They get around Townsend coming off the corner. Hirschman a little bit quicker right now here late in the race. He'll be the favorite tomorrow night in the Richie Evans Memorial 100. But he would love to pick up a victory in this short distance race. Meanwhile, the 07 of Emerling, a few car lengths ahead. Three laps to go for Emerling, Blewett, and Hirschman. I think right now Hirschman might be thinking championship is. If they were to finish right now, they would be tied again in the point stinks. But if Hirschman can get by, he will have the points lead here as we cross the line now two to go and yellow is out now you can throw all of that out the window as we are going to have a shootout to the finish 32 laps in three to go the yellow for this car jeremy gerstner has looped it uh, on the inside of turn number two Oh, how sick Patrick Emerling must be feeling right now in the cockpit of that 07 car. Still think he might have the best car right now, but he didn't want to have to go through a restart to prove it. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen once the tire temperatures cool down out there. As you take a look at the official scoring right now, they did not complete that lap, so it's going to be a three-lap shootout for the checkers coming up here. Patrick Emerling this week, third place opening night, 22nd the second night, and seventh last night. Yes, uh, this is actually a brand new car. Uh, this is um, comes out of the PSR shop in North Carolina. And they're looking uh, to uh, create their own line of chassis going forward. So they've done a nice job in creating their own home-built cars um, out there as well as Will's running um, some other chassis out there as well with a couple of their own ideas added, but this might be a force to be reckoned with in the future, so who knows? It might, uh, it might be something to watch uh, for years to come in modified racing in terms of chassis constructors. Again, recapping the points coming in, Nacella was the points leader by two over Matt Hirschman, and one spot separates the two tonight with Hirschman in third, Nocella in fourth, which would mean if the race would end as they are running right now, they would be tied for the point lead. Ryan Priest was third in points. He's not here tonight, of course. His duty's over at the big track at Daytona International Speedway. Craig Lutz, a winner earlier this week, running fourth in the points, but he finds himself 28 behind Nocella. And Mike Willis in the 83 car, running fifth in points coming in. Willis currently 10th in the rundown in this 35 lap race 32 completed three laps to go emerling is the leader blue is in second hirschman is in third and nocella is in fourth nocella being that money spot for the restart and outside of row number two can be a great place to be it's going to be very interesting to see which line patrick emerling is going to choose on the restart here of course the outside is the fast line here but uh going to also be able to possibly open up that inside uh, to Jimmy Blue. And again, he's the kind of guy that's not afraid to use the nerf bars out there. And of course, you've got the possibility that Matt Hirschman might be able to scoop by it too. So I don't know if I were to take an educated guess, I would um, have to say that Emerling may uh, play a conservative here, take that inside line away is I just don't think um, Blue it might not might doesn't have the car to be able to contend with and at the same time, 
Emerling can keep Matt Hirschman in check behind him. It's going to be interesting. It's a lot of strategy determining which lane they choose. Most drivers choose the outside lane. We saw Nocella do that a couple nights ago, and it cost him because Lutz took him up the track and one and two in a late race restart. That guy on the inside lane, if he can stay on the inside of the guy on the outside going into turn one, then he kind of controls the destiny because he has the choice of whether to take it up the track or not. Yep, and of course, there's just so much potential for something you can't even predict um, out there. Uh, if you get um, that top four packed in big time going into, into turn one, and they stay packed you know, all the way around, and there's the slightest bobble, you never know. You might even have um, somebody from even further back, like Craig Lutz and Dave Sapienza. They're back there. They're going to be back there in the third row for that restart. And again, Lutz, he's won this week, so he's got a card to contend with up there should he get another opportunity. Checking the track. Making sure we're ready to go. You see they've put some drying agent down in a couple spots on the racetrack and some fluid that they found. Yeah, you got some there in the restart zone in turn number four. So that could potentially make things a little skittish coming to the restart um, here. So it's going to be very important for these guys to keep their tires warm. Of course, um, it is a warm night down here in Florida. It's still about 70 degrees um, out there. Too, so should be too much um, trouble keeping those tire temperatures up. Today was definitely warm. This Speed Weeks in general has been warmer than any that I can remember recently as we've had a number of days at 80 or above. Normally you see about one day close to 80 and that's about it. Most of them are in the mid 70s or low 70s at best. But this year has been warm. Other than last Friday night was a little cool. Saturday was a little cool and then it really started to go up in temperature. It goes back down over the next couple of days. Yeah, there's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see tomorrow night, um, especially how um, forecasts saying for highs in the 60s tomorrow and then dropping off you know, into the 50s. So, And that's something that these modified guys have not had to contend with this week. Of course, um, guys in the super late models, the pro late models, the Florida modifieds, they've already had to deal with that. So, they, so they've got some notes. These were top modified drivers don't, so hey, still I think it's going to be an interesting practice tomorrow as well. Still 76 degrees out here in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Good, goodness yeah. gracious, Gallup, nine o'clock, nine o'clock at night, and you watch the temperatures and the cold front coming in overnight tomorrow morning, and it's going to be 68 degrees at 5 a.m. when it starts, with a little chance of rainfall between 5 a.m. and noon tomorrow. Uh, the biggest chances for rain tomorrow morning, 7, 8 o'clock. But, again, tomorrow afternoon and evening dry, so there will be a Richie Evans Memorial 100 run on a Friday night here at New Smyrna Speedway. But that's interesting in itself, um, Adam, that tomorrow uh, you've had all this rubber buildup. We had some rain about the end of the week, uh, about, I'd say, six nights ago. So you've had all this rubber buildup on the track surface um, over almost a week or so of just continuous racing and now you get a hard rain either late tonight or very early this morning that's going to be gone it's going to be very interesting to see what happens of course you're going to have a lot of practice laps some um, out there but still even the slightest change is going to send these drivers and the, their crew chiefs for a loop night number eight coming up tomorrow night featuring that richie evans memorial tour type modified 100 Pro late models also to go 100 laps tomorrow night. Yep, got the Zach Donati uh, memorial uh, for them. So, pro trucks, they'll be in action for the first time this week. And the Ground Pounders scheduled to be here tomorrow night. Then Saturday night, the World Series 2020 finale, Orange Blossom Super Late Model 100 for the Super Lates. The Modifieds, uh, Florida Modifieds, will be in action. Super Stocks, Pro Trucks in action as well on Saturday night. Final two nights of the World Series, getting ready to come at you. If you're in the area, come on out to New Smyrna Speedway and check out the racing. If not, we will have it for you here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. As the one-to-go signal was given after a lengthy cleanup period to make sure the track was in good shape. Yep, and, I'll t and also touching on that super late mile race, of course, uh, the, a lot of the buzz late. 
the last few days in um, the Northeast has been, of course, about the tour type mob fights as well as the performance by Anthony Nacelle last night. But a lot of people talk about Derek Griffith, the driver out of Hudson, New Hampshire, getting it done both in the Super Late Models and in the Arca Menard Series East on Monday night. That he has done. He's been on the podium a lot this week. He's been in victory lane. And who's going to be in victory lane three laps from now? Emerling is the leader. He does choose the inside lane. He gets on the go pedal and heads into turn number one. He'll have the lead. The battle is for second between Hirschman and Blewett. Well, the inside line paid up, but here comes Hirschman, almost three wide. He makes quick work of Jimmy Blewett. But, oh, not so fast. Blewett hanging in there on the outside as Blewett, he's under the line. He's underneath Patrick Emerling as they cross the line, two to go. Oh, Hirschman now in a side-by-side -side battle. They close the gap on Emerling off the corner and down the back stretch. Lap and a half to go. Emerling leads the way. The battle for second continues. They're going to come down now for the white flag. Contacts between all three cars. That lets them sort it out. Emerling now with the lead as Lutz looking for third position, but it's going to be between Patrick Emerling and Jimmy Blewett. Blewett takes a poke to the inside. Patrick Emerling now going to defend to the inside as we got trouble down the back straightaway as they come to the checker flag. It's Patrick Emerling holding off. Jimmy Blewett for the win in the Tour Tight Modifieds. Woo, those last three laps were a little breathtaking at times. We saw contact between Hirschman and Blewett. We got a little bit scary there for a moment. Yep, great job by all three drivers um, to keep the nose straight. Disappointing uh, for Blewett as he uh, is a, comes up a little bit short now, but what a job by Patrick Emerly. He was under pressure that final restart, but he managed to gets the perfect restart and come home with the big money here tonight. Thought for a moment, though, that maybe the decision to take the inside lane as we watch the last couple of laps here, the replay, seeing Emerling get out front, but in doing so, it allowed the 60 of Hirschman to get to the inside. Hirschman then drives up along the inside lane, gets around Blewett, and I thought at this point, here goes Hirschman for a chance for a victory as he was a little better in the middle of the corners than Emerling was. Yep, is, and now we see what happened is it was uh, McCarthy who got uh, turned around on the back straightaway. It looks like by Tyler Rickema out there is. Meanwhile, the leaders, they were able to come back around as we see the final battle now as Blewett, ooh, he gave Emerling a bit of a shot there to the back bumper, but not enough as he climbs out of the car as we're going to send it down to Victory Lane and Alan Dietz. Patrick Emerling out of his car after his first win of the World Series and uh, looked like Jimmy and Matt didn't make it exactly easy for you. No, absolutely not. Um, yeah, you know, I, I say uh, we were kind of struggling the last couple weeks here and, um, you know, we finally, uh, you know, finally uh, got it where it needed to be tonight and uh, that was the best car we had so far and, um, yeah, it was... Uh, I was hoping for no caution there, but uh, that caution definitely made some things interesting there. So I liked it on the bottom there, which is kind of, uh, in most cases, you wouldn't do that. So, um, but uh, we were able to get a good jump and it worked out. And the next couple laps, um, all, all three of our cars are running the same exact pace all race. And um, just uh, probably the most fun uh, couple what laps. What are you sweating for? What's up? <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah that, yeah, that was probably the most fun couple laps and I had in a long time. So uh, it was pretty stoked to be one down here. Um, Got to give it up to um, everyone on my team here. Come here, work their butts off, and um, I'm happy to finally uh, get, get her back in victory lane down here. So uh, awesome, of course. Great job. Thank you. Patrick Emerling coming home with his first win of the World Series tonight as we'll work our way back to our second and third place finishers. Jimmy Blewett coming home with another podium finish. And he'll get, I believe, his best finish of Speed Weeks. And we'll come down and talk to Jimmy. And uh, let's turn you around here, Jimmy. Let's turn you around here. Uh, man, just didn't quite have enough for that 07 tonight. But uh, like you said, you made him sweat. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all sweating a little bit. It's hot here, but uh, first I want to say 
Happy Valentine's Day to my wife and my daughter and all the mothers back home. Um, we couldn't be able to do this without you back home um, helping us out. But uh, no, we had a fast car tonight. Just got by me early and he had a lot of speed. You know, I wanted to save just a little bit if I could, you know, for the end there, which I did. But I was going to cross him over coming off of two. I think Matt knew that. So he tried to fill, you know, he tried to cross me over as well. And um, I wasn't going to put Patrick three wide. We did the best we could. You know, we got a big race, all of us, tomorrow night. I know Matt's running for points. Every spot counts for him. But he ran me like a gentleman. And so did Patrick. So uh, it's on to tomorrow night. You know, five car there. I have no idea w why why he was cleared so early. You know, Kyle's a great guy, and I get along good with him, but his spotter obviously cleared him too soon there with me on the front stretch. But uh, got an in-car camera for that kind of stuff. But uh, I just want to say thanks to Joe Bertuccio for this opportunity, Tommy Baldwin and uh, Glenn Dixon, all my guys on the crew turning the wrenches on the scene this week. Um, just really looking forward to tomorrow night and finishing out on a positive note. All right, Jimmy Blewett hopes to do one better. In the Rich Evans Memorial tomorrow night, Matt Hirschman coming over. We'll come and get a word here with Matt. And Matt uh, just didn't quite have enough for those guys tonight. But in the big picture, you gained eight points tonight on the 92 of uh, Nocella. So that's got to be encouraging for you going into tomorrow night. Yeah, I just got tired of finishing second. I said we were going to finish somewhere else now. Um, yeah, it. Um, I mean, I, I'm not aware of that until now. Uh, I knew earlier there he was with me. But, uh, I mean, uh, I guess we'll have a little cushion, but that doesn't. We still, you still got to execute tomorrow night, so I'm not concerned with that. Um, you know, it just um, I probably um, should have probably finished second. Uh, I think I could have probably went in and, and slid up. Instead, I thought maybe about a – a run on the bottom off a of four on Emerling and uh, probably cost myself second. But uh, then once Jimmy got back ahead of me, that last corner, I was going to let them settle it and see what happened there. Uh, and uh, we'll move on to tomorrow night. You got to feel good going into the Evans Memorial. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm, uh, you know, like you said, the way the week started, I would have thought we probably got a win or two by now. But uh, but we're finishing every night. The guys are doing a good job on the car. And uh I see no reason why we shouldn't be a contender tomorrow night. All right, Adam. A lot of people have got Matt Hirschman circled on their list as the favorite going into tomorrow night's Richie Evans Memorial. Yeah, one would think that would be the case. Jokingly saying he just didn't want to finish second again tonight because he had done it the first three nights, so he fell back to third. But he was so close. But so was Blewett. He made a move, and like Blewett said, he could have gone three wide between those two guys, but it would have probably ended up in a crash as we look at some of the highlights of this one. Early on in the race, that opening lap crash that saw the 32 of Ripkema and the 45 of Maservi go around. There's another look at it from our pit road camera. As mainly damaged to the right front of a couple of those cars, we go back to a restart. Blewett goes out front. Blewett leads the way, but that five, a couple of laps later, gets to the inside and maybe thought he had him cleared going into turn one, closes the door a little too soon, contact made, and nowhere for Blewett to go. Ebersol ends up in the wall with a hard crash, badly damaging the front of the car. Blewett back out front, Emerling for the lead. Side-by-side -side battle in turn three. And Patrick Emerling, as he goes into turn one, is going to be able to pull it off as he continued to give him room. There's Nocella racing with Lutz. Nocella was able to make the pass of Lutz and actually had moved up into the top five and into the fourth. But then on this restart, he fades back late in the event. Emerly able to beat Blewett into turn one. Here's where the battle between Hirschman and Blewett and Sue. There's where Blewett could have gone three wide, but it probably wouldn't have ended with a good result. So a smart move there for Blewett. Hirschman looked like he was going to be a threat right here as he was a little quicker through the middle of the corners than Emerling, looking back in the field, last lap, there's the crash by the 22 car as it slides down the banking toward the infield, and there's victory. Victory lane for Patrick Emerling for the first time this week, a good run tonight, and that's a field of super late models getting ready to go for 35 laps. They are up next, coming your way right here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold.
Welcome back to our coverage here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. The super late models are lined up and ready to go. It's our final feature of the night, a 35-lap race that has a super late model class that has seen some really good racing over the last few nights. Hey, let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. How did Connor do? Connor did great. Con dog, Connie. He knows those guys. He knows them real well. He obviously gets to see them seen. a lot. And Connor was able to come up and call the 35-lapper. It's always fun to get to hear Connor's take on how things go. I got to be honest with you. Uh, it's beautiful out there right now. Whatever little 76 showers. 76 degrees. Yeah, whatever. Well, it's not nearly as humid. Whatever little showers or whatever they had in Daytona kind of unsaturated the air. And uh, that was really nice to be able to sit down, uh, well, stand down in the pit wall and, and watch that action. Heck of a race for the tour type modifiers. But as you said, Adam, it's time for us to go super late model racing. That it is. As you see our lineup of cars on pit road, Derek Griffith fourth fast in qualifying and he couldn't have qualified any more perfect no. because that's going to put him on the pole position for this 35 lap race he's the points leader by 12 over jesse love coming into the final couple of nights and that's a big points lead all things considered here with the world series that six positions on the racetrack remember winner gets 50 second place gets 48 and on down in two point increments up to his outside the Mahindra Tractors forward out of Monroe, Georgia, of Jake Garcia. And that car number 35, Adam, we've seen him run strong this week, but he started further back. I wouldn't be surprised to, to see young Jake Garcia challenge for the win. And remember, his crew chief, Ricky Turner, former Snowball Derby winner as a driver, and he's won it as a crew chief with Chase Elliott and also helped guide Chandler Smith in recent years through super late models. Third place point man and champion of this track in 2019 brad may starting in the third spot as may's car much better in qualifying tonight than last night where he was mired deep in the pack brad may starts third jesse love pretty impressed with this kid out of california you know he had the problem opening night and made some contact when he slid off the flat part of the racetrack up into a car and caused a pile up and took out ryan moore took out augie grill well he's been pretty error free the last several nights and tonight he starts in the fourth spot as top qualifier and guess what both of those drivers those veterans who were a little upset with him last friday night they start right behind him on row three ryan moore rc moore transportation toyota from scarborough maine he now lives in north carolina he'll start fifth in the car number 74 up to his outside that'll be the car number 112 the rnm install.com chevrolet from hayden alabama of augie grill Sammy Smith, young driver, up and down week this week for a super late model rookie out of Des Moines, Iowa in the 51 car. Max Caius out of McAllen, Texas in the 148. Will start in the eighth position on the outside of row four. Rounding out the top ten, Justin Mondike in the 44 and Trey Bain in the 9B. Mondike has done well in that 44, the flower box hemp dryers forward as we go back now to our sixth row starting back in 11th the racing for heroes toyota out of south boston virginia for colin garrett to his outside from middlebury vermont the car number one of todd stone starting 13th the 51 car it's of steven nasty i double checked i looked out on the track and said could that be an error no he did not qualify well tonight 13th place starter last night's winner Stephen Nassi starting 14th, Austin McDonald in the 13th. Back in row number eight, starting in 15th, in the car number five out of Ontario. That's Jerry Artuso. Oh, Alan, you didn't, you didn't hook me up. That, I was actually down there at the Jet Motorsports team, and while they were watching the modified race, I actually tried a few of those wings. I saw you licking your fingers in Victory Lane down there during the interview, so I wondered what that was all about. Well, that had nothing to do with the with the wings. I just like to taste the rubber and asphalt. Ah. Now, back in 16th, in the car number 39 from Buford, Georgia, that's Kyle Sieg. Joe Valento out of Minnesota in the 30s, starting in the 17th position. Steve Weaver in the 112 starts 18th. Patrick Thomas drives the 9 car in 19th. And Kevin Ingram in the 4 starts 20th. Now Mark Keeler is getting his notepad out based on what I just said. So I'm sure he's going to make an off-air crack at us. 
<laughs> yeah, well, he did, and we can't say it on air. But thanks, Mark. Rolling under yellow. What a race week it's been for the super late models. I think, all in all, I mean, obviously the Tour Modifieds in there three or four nights have put on amazing shows, but the super late models have been pretty solid night after night. Yes, and if I put my prognosticator hat on right now, you know, I think you see a couple of stories right there in those those three or four cars. I think this is going to be a breakout year for that car number 35 of Jake Garcia. I think this is going to be a career year for Derek Griffith that could really lead to some big things. And I think by the end of 2020, Jesse Love in that car number 21 between super late models and Arca Menard Series racing, I think a lot of people are going to know that young man's name that maybe didn't coming into this year. And he's got great hair. We learned that, too. Very soft. You felt it? Well, you weren't up the other morning when we did the bull ring for Speed 51. And as you know, I don't have nearly as much hair as I used to. So it was kind of a story. And I, I padded his hair a little bit and uh, really, really soft. Good condition. And now you can't go within, like, oh, no, 50 I got a court, miles. No, I got a court order against me right now for just doing that top four were inverted after qualifying is the nine of may and 35 of garcia start in the first row the second row of top qualifiers Derek griffith and jesse love so there's been some moving around of positions on this lineup that we were originally given and i think it had to do with qualifying we were given a lineup that maybe had been adjusted a little bit so nonetheless they've got the lineup corrected and that changes everything up because we had Derek Griffith starting on the pole well that's yeah. the last thing the field wanted to see because now it's Brad May who is also very good he ended up in victory lane earlier this week but Griffith has to come from third instead I wish we had a camera here so we could actually show him that we did not screw up the lineup yes we might have to tweet that later and say yeah I heard they said there were two different lineups for super late models well I had a 50-50 chance of getting the right one and we did not fail. Green flag this time for Brad May and Jake Garcia coming to green. Final race on night number seven. Chevrolet and Ford going to lead the field to green flag as Brad May going to lead going down into turn number one. Remember, when he won earlier this week, he started oh. on the front row. Jake Garcia dirt tracks it out of turn four, gathers it in. But that's going to allow Ryan Moore to look to his inside. Ryan Moore has had a couple of nights where he hasn't been all that good. You saw three wide for a moment. Max Caius in the 148 was between Mondike in the 44 and the 112 of Grill. He backs out of it. Smart move for the youngster from Texas. Down the back straightaway they go. Now a battle back for fourth as Sammy Smith, the opening night winner, he'll look down to the inside of Garcia. He clears him out of turn four. Sammy Smith started seventh. He's up to fourth. He's on the move early. Good run in the early going for the teenager from Iowa. Sammy Smith and the Kyle Busch Motorsports TMC Transport number 51. Couple of laps complete. Top qualifier sliding back that 21 car of Jesse Love. He's lost a couple of positions. He tries to regroup. You know, I, I think that he just kind of got caught in the wrong lines there, Adam. Um, Jake Garcia kind of had a stumble, mm -hmm. and, and I think that got him back. But now he's going to try to take a spot away here from Jake Garcia as they race for fifth. He's on the inside lane. Kind of tiptoed through the bottom of turn four where his mishap on that opening night occurred. He's got those left side tires right down on the yellow line, but he's holding a pretty wheel right now as he tries to make the move on Jake Garcia. Just not enough room right there. He gets those left side tires right down on that apron, does that 21 car, but looks like Garcia's car is stabilized a little bit. Air pressures might have needed to come up just a little bit. And seems like he's in a little bit better spot right now as we come around to complete lap six. Nose to tail, battle continues. Fifth and six on our screen. Augie Grill back in seventh. And tight competition right there between the 35 of Garcia, the 21 of Love. They Watching work. night number seven of the World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing. Alan Dietz and Adam Aki bringing you super late model action from New Smyrna Speedway. We are in the early going of this race, final race of the night. And he gets those tires down on that apron and 
with a super late model, you're not supposed to be able to, to get down there and make it work. He gets into the back of Garcia just a little bit. They make some more contact out of turn four as now Love will get side by side here as they come out of turn four. But again, they're a little bit swirly. A little bit squirrely coming off of turn number two, but Love's going to be able to complete the pass. Augie Grill tries to stick it in there, closing the doors, Garcia. Grill right there still wants it, looking to the low side. Mondike right behind them is the battle now for Jake Garcia as he tries to hold on to six. Grill, some contact sideways off of two. You know, the weird thing is that the bad thing for Jake Garcia in that car number 35 he got his best starting position tonight, but this is really the worst he's ran all week here. Yeah, he's fading back instead of going forward. And that's not a good sign for the 35 as he finished runner up in this past year's snowball derby. He's had some great runs, but tonight falling back a little bit into the grasp of Augie Grill and Justin Mondike. We've completed the first 11 laps of the event. Brad May leading, Derek Griffith in second, Ryan Moore running third. There's Steven Nassie trying to come up through the field, currently running in the 11th position. Nassie started deep in the pack in 13th, and he hasn't really been able to move forward very much. Well, you know, I think for Steven Nassie, you know, he's got to be looking forward to that 100 lap for the Orange Blossom Saturday night, the finale here of the World Series. He's got a good car. I would say that they might have just missed it a little bit tonight in qualifying. And, might be better to just kind of stick back here and see how the car's doing. Trey Bain will make a move here on Caius to break in uh, up there into the ninth spot. Nassie on the inside of Caius going down the back stretch into the third turn is just ahead of them, the nine of Bain. Bain's had a tough week, had to go to a backup car after a crash. He was involved in that crash earlier this week when Grill, as well as Ryan Moore, got caught up with the accident with Jesse Love as you watch Nassie following Bain through three and four. And those are actually teammates out of the Jet Motorsports stables. Back behind them, some contact as Colin Garrett gets down on the inside of Max Caius. They make some more contact in turn two. Colin Garrett had a decent start to the week in the 24 car, but has really struggled the last couple of nights. Well, they started the week in this car that they are driving tonight. Then they went to an older Hamke for a couple of nights. It didn't seem to work out. They went back to their newer car. And this car is one that was one of the final Hamke cars that was built. And he picks up the spot trying to move forward. He practiced well earlier today. Qualifying didn't go so well. Currently running 11th. And of course, now the what was Hamke race cars is Rowdy Manufacturing. As we watch this race between the Jet Motorsports teammates, Trey Bain in that night, more or less uh, taking over for the semi-retired Jeff Chiquette, at least this week. And their other teammate, Jet Nolan, he got involved in that crash last night, not able to make the start tonight here for the first time with the super late models. Nassi trying to move up again. This would be for the ninth position. So Nassi is moving up, but not real quickly. He's going to need some help with some sporadic yellows to be able to make his moves if he wants to get up and compete for a top five after a win last night his car was really strong a night ago you notice we haven't watched the front of the pack and over the top of your screen you'll see Derek Griffin 1.7 seconds behind Brad May make it 1.8 seconds behind Brad May he is checked out he's running by himself right now as we continue to watch this good battle back between Bain and Nassi this time, Nancy gets a good run. He'll take the ninth position. And then over there on the left side of your screen, you see Brad May, who is running well. And, and he needs a good points tonight. He won't gain as much on Derek Griffith as he'll need to. But he's going to gain some much-needed points on Jesse Love for second if things stay as they are. I'd say that's the best that Brad May's been all week. He did win a feature, but tonight really dominating, pulling away from Derek Griffith, which is not an easy task over two seconds the lead for the orlando florida driver as we are well past the halfway mark now 12 laps to go for brad may there's ryan moore into car number 74 he's in third been a roller coaster for him a crash last friday night 
He's had a podium finish, but it seems like when the car's been on, it's been on. When it's been off, it's been really on. Ryan Moore, Sammy Smith, third and fourth, following Griffith into turn number one. Ryan Moore, badly damaged race car on opening night. Thought that their week would be done, but sure enough, they fixed it. And in fact, you can't even tell by looking at the car now that they had any damage earlier this week. And it was damaged on the left side and the right side. His dad, Kelly Moore, a legend up in New England, told Speak 51 earlier this week that he's going to run for the entire Pass North Championship starting at Loudoun in April. So it'll be good to see Kelly Moore again racing for a championship as Ryan Moore with the family business, RC Moore Transportation, not able to race as much. Really, the bulk of his racing comes here at the World Series. Watching as Moore in the 74 and the 51 of Smith continue nose to tail, third and fourth. Fifth place, Jesse Love, who did recover from fading back a few spots early on from his fourth starting position. But these cars are so equal in the super late model class. It can be one of those situations when it's a small invert that the drivers that start up front get that advantage. And Brad May is taking big advantage of that pull starting position. Well, we saw it in the pro late model race with Jamie Skinner. It seems like if you, it doesn't take long to open up a gap or it doesn't take very long to lose a lot of, of ground. And I think that's what happened here with Jesse Love tonight. He just, he lost too much ground. He's, he's got a good fast race car. I mean, he's just as fast as the leaders, but again, just too far back right now. Trying to make a move on Smith as we now have six to go. Going to be five laps remaining for Brad May this next time at the line. And things heating up for the fourth position as the 51 of Smith holds off the 21 of Love. 30 laps complete. Oh, real close coming off of turn two. Thought that battle for real estate was going to get rough, and now the field slows yep, going into problem. turn number three, and it's for a car of Todd Stone stopped up along the outside retaining wall in turn four. Driver from the northeast. Used to see him in the Florida Modifieds here and then saw him in the Pro Lates. He's moved up to Super Late Models. Just a couple of starts this week for Todd Stone. This is the last thing Brad May wanted to see. Clearly had the fastest race car and, you know, we've seen as it looks like Todd Stone definitely made some contact with the outside wall, got a flat right front tire and maybe some other damage. But as we've seen this week on these restarts, they can get wild. And, you know, Brad May's going to have to be perfect on this restart with Derek Griffith, Ryan Moore, Sammy Smith, and Jesse Love all around him. Also has a waterfall going on. Guys, A bit of a geyser, yes. Yeah. One goes up, the other one goes down. Right. Well, this eventually goes down. It doesn't dissipate in the air first. Right. You know, another thing, uh, when we come back here tomorrow night for the uh, Richie Evans Memorial, we're going to have a lot of great racing action here tomorrow night. But it's going to be a lot cooler. It's going to be about 20 degrees cooler here tomorrow, and I think that could really change a lot of things here. Watching them jack up the one of Todd Stone. But they will work on that car. Looked like he just got into the wall, maybe coming off of one of the turns to slap the right side up there. As our final race of the night has now just five laps remaining. Tomorrow night, Ground Pounders, Pro Late Model 100, Richie Evans Memorial 100. All will be in action as well as the Florida Modifieds. Yeah, I think the Super Late's... Uh their big race again on Saturday. I guess not Florida Modified tomorrow night. Pro Trucks will yep. be in action. Yes. Yep, and it'll be the first time we'll see the Pro Trucks here for the World Series, and they'll be here on Friday and Saturday night. Again, our coverage here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold will begin at 725 Eastern Time, and we'll have racing at 730. Thanks to Zach Evans from Speed51.com letting us know that Tech has cleared in each of the three classes so far. Pro Lates, Florida Mods, and Tour Mods. Tour Mod Tech clear, pending tire samples, which will be sent out. They've been sending those out sporadically throughout all of our regular divisions throughout the week. 
first round of tire samples came back in a, and they were testing as clear for any of tire soaking materials that they tested for. And they uh, they send those tire samples to the Blue Ridge Laboratories, and they uh, they did it, or the results they've got back so far were from some of the early nights of the super late models and the tour type modifieds. And for those of you not familiar, tire soaking, uh, a way that um, you can manipulate the tires with chemicals to soften them and, and do different things. And uh, let's just say it's frowned upon. Ready for green. Brad May in the nine's the leader. Derek Griffith gives it a run on the outside. He bobbles and goes up the track. That helps Brad May take the lead at the line and continue to lead. Five laps to go, 30 completed, more, and Smith, as well as Love, third, fourth, and fifth. How many times have we seen the leader, other than Anthony Nasilla the other night in the Tour Type Modifieds, choose the inside of row number one? Not many times Ooh. it worked for Brad May as he dirt tracked it out of turn four. So did Augie Grill in the white 112. He made a little bit of contact with the wall. Burnout's coming out of that fourth corner for a couple of our drivers, and Brad May, the leader, was one of those. It's going to be three laps to go. That's a battle between Love and Smith. It's for the fourth position, right behind Ryan Moore. Good, good battle for that final podium position, and Jesse Love going to try and steal it away here, maybe, from Ryan Moore. Remember, they got into it on opening night. Some incidental contact sent Moore up into the outside wall. And this caution has worked out very well for Jesse Love now here with two laps to go. Final lap and a half now for Brad May, who leads middle of the backstretch. But we watch these drivers. Jesse Love for the third spot. Ryan Moore on the outside in fourth. He'll slip back. Now he'll have to try to close the door before Smith gets there as the white flag is waving. Final lap for Brad May. And this is big for Jesse Love because it looked like Brad May and Derek Griffith were going to gain a lot of points on him. Not so much now as we watch these battles just outside of the top five. But for the second time here at the World Series, Brad May will take the Super Late Model checkered flag. Derek Griffith will finish in second. Jesse Love in third. Ryan Moore in fourth. And fifth will go to Sammy Smith unofficially looking at our point standings Derek Griffith will continue to be the leader but Brad May is going to gain some points he and Jesse Love will be tied now and it looks like again unofficially Derek Griffith will be 16 points ahead of Brad May and Jesse Love as we stand here in the World Series standings and those top three drivers on the front straightaway are the top three that we just mentioned here in the standings. So Adam Mackey going to head down trackside, and he'll talk to our top three finishers. As Brad May is about to climb out down in victory lane, let's turn it down trackside to Adam Mackey. Brad May climbs out second victory of the week, tries to close in on that points battle with Derek Griffith a little bit. As Derek makes his way over to victory lane to congratulate Brad May. Smiles among both and Brad May. Second victory of the week. The first one was pretty emotional. The second one tonight, man, this car was really good. Yeah, when I went to bed last night, I told my wife I'm going to get to work on it and I'm going to win a race tomorrow night, which is tonight. So uh, we did it. Happy Valentine's Day to her. Now, you get ready for a 100-lapper coming up in a couple of nights. How's the car on the long run? Do you need to make any adjustments before Saturday rolls around? You know, as good as it is right now, I hate to change too much. I'm real happy with it. It felt really good at the end of that run. It's going to be a little different race Saturday. They've got a little different strategies going in, making us pit and stuff. So um, we're going to go over everything, and hopefully it'll be as good on Saturday as it is tonight. The Super Late Model class has grown in strength as this week has gone on. Derek Griffith has been so good in that 12. You probably knew he was the one to beat. He's been phenomenal. He, he's such an awesome driver. They're such a great group of guys. I, I wish the best for him. Hope he can get an ARCA ride for uh, Pensacola. If anybody's out there listening, need to get this guy in a car. But um, we're happy to be here, just really enjoying New Smyrna Speedway and Speed Weeks and hoping we can pull off another one on Saturday. A big vote of confidence to Derek Griffith from Brad May. Our winner tonight says get this kid a ride to put him in a race at Pensacola March 14th for that Arkham Menard Series East race as we make our way back to Derek Griffith. We'll bring Derek over here by the car. Derek, uh, 
second place run. I thought, man, the way this car has been, good starting spot tonight. I thought you were going to be the one to beat, but Brad May had you covered tonight. Where could you have been any better? Uh, we were just a little free. I was hoping with that restart he would take the top, so I was a little bit better on the bottom than I was up on the top side. So he uh, he just got me good on that on that restart and uh, and got a, got cleared up. So um, and after that I just had nothing for him. We were supposed to, uh, on on the te- on the tech line up. We're, they inverted four and uh, Sergi didn't uh, want to race tonight, so we ended up fourth. We were supposed to start pole, but. I guess they changed that as we rolled out. Um, but we had a good car. Track position is just so important here. Um, you know, if you're not if you're not up front, then you're gonna have a tough time getting you know moving forward. So we had a good car. Just uh, you know, now time for the hundred lapper, a little bit more our speed. I I said it all week. I really don't like these thirty five lap races too too much. So um, hundred lappers more up our alley. We'll make the make this thing good for a hundred lapper. Brad May finished his interview with saying, you know what, you need to get somebody needs to get that kid a ride for the Arkham and Ards race over at Pensacola in March. That's a pretty big vote of confidence from a competitor, right? Yeah, Brad's so cool, man. We've been coming down here for years and uh, it's been uh, you know, he's been so good to us. We've uh, I've learned so much from him and uh, you know, he's been nothing but helpful since the first time I've been down here and after you know, after the Arca race, it was so cool. We got to uh, hang. I pulled in to unload the car the next day, and uh, had David Rogers, Bubba, Brad May, and a couple other people down there waiting for me to talk to me. So you know that meant a lot. And uh, you know, someone who's won championships here for years and won races all over the place down here in Florida. Um, you know, it's it means a lot for me to to come from him out of anyone. And uh, you know, it's he's going to be a legend. Really, he's won track championships here for years. So. Um, he did a good job tonight. He had the car to beat, and uh, you know we'll come back for Saturday's hundred lapper pretty strong. I hope. Derek Griffith, yet another podium finish, second place run here tonight, third place run back here for Jesse Love, and it's another podium finish. Jesse, good run tonight. Car was strong. You qualified fastest, started there in the four spot, then worked your way back a few spots and then you had to recover from it and a late race restart kind of helped you get back up there you had to work hard tonight for a podium yeah i don't think you know we really worked ourselves back the 35 just didn't go and it really hurt us and you know these guys they gave me a really great car we showed speed the whole day and um you know we didn't mock up the second runs but on practice but uh we had the best car there at the end there um in the whole race so We'll come back uh, for the hunter lap or hopefully get a little bit more luck on our sides. Invert and uh, and the luck on the lane choice is just killing us. And we're the best car here. We got the best package, so we're going to show it tomorrow. Hunter lapper. There you heard it, Jesse Love. Third place run for the 21 car tonight. Our top three on night seven of the World Series. Thanks, Adam. And let's look at our top ten super late model finishers tonight. Brad May celebrating his second win of the World Series in victory lane Derek griffith will finish second jesse love in third brian moore comes home in fourth sammy smith will finish fifth augie grill is sixth jake garcia justin mondike stephen nancy and trey bain your top 10. and we'll take a look here at the highlights of the night here wild start to the pro late model race they'll race for 100 laps here tomorrow night a lot of beating and banging in this race between Nicholas Noggle and Jet Nolan. Saw a little bit of three-wide racing as well. When it was all said and done, though, Jamie Skinner able to take home his second win of the 2020 World Series. Then it was time for the Florida Modifieds, and Travis Eddy absolutely dominated Um, The biggest win we've seen as far as margin of victory in this World Series. Tour type modifieds came up next. Pretty big accident to start the race off. Tyler Ripkema, Brett Meservi, and others involved. Then the lead battle between Jimmy Blewett and the five of Kyle Ebersole. Didn't end well for Ebersole. More hard racing. Bobby McCarthy around over on the back straightaway. And then this exciting finish as Patrick Emerling takes the checkered flag in front of Jimmy Blewett and Matt Hirschman for his first win of the World Series. And then super late model racing. Jesse Love, as he mentioned to Adam, got caught up behind Jake Garcia there and lost a lot of ground. Saw a little contact. Augie Grill still trying to fine-tune that car as the week goes on, and Brad May claims the victory. That nine car 
stout tonight. Very stout, and the super late models will take the night off tomorrow night on Valentine's Day. We hope you can come back and join us for more coverage here tomorrow night starting at 725 Eastern Time here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. Richie Evans Memorial for the Tour Type Modifieds. They'll go for 100 laps. Pro Late Models, they'll race for 100 laps. It'll be the final time we'll see both of those divisions this weekend. Pro Trucks will come in, and they'll have a 25-lapper for their first start of the 2020 World Series and the Ground Pounders for 25 laps as well. We are down to the final two nights of the 54th running of the World Series. If you can't make it out to the track, we'll have the coverage for you. Again, that Richie Evans Memorial 100 and the final night for the Tour Type Modifieds as we'll determine a champion of the race and a champion for the World Series tomorrow night in the Tour Type Mods. Remember, hashtag track pass to make any comments on social media about our coverage from here at New Smyrna Speedway. For Adam Mackey, I'm Alan Dietz. Thanks to the entire crew for another great job here tonight. We look forward to seeing you back here on Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold tomorrow night at 725 Eastern Time. See you then.